Well, we seem to have a technical glitch there with our starting logo for some reason. It, uh, it went away on its own, and it wasn't playing any of the sounds that I had programmed for it. So, oh well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, kids, and welcome to season two and episode number 25 of Beaver Bites, our much less scripted version of our regular podcast. The same incisive commentary on Canadian politics and general culture, but much less scripted. Today, recording day is Sunday, July 24th, 2022, and it has been a bit of an odd weather day here at uh, the Beaver Lodge. Um, I don't, I can't say for which I'm grateful on this one because uh, there's been a thunderstorm threatening all day and it sort of has not really happened. And it looks like it's going to happen at 10 o'clock, but the barometric pressure has just been doing everything insane today. It poured rain here today. It hasn't hit here yet. Well, it well last night I uh, went out to the country to my buddy's place for dinner. A bunch of us went over, and as we were driving there, the rain was so hard we had to pull over on the highway because you couldn't see more than like twenty meters in front of you. And then then it stopped. Then it was clear skies for the rest of the evening. The sun came out. It was weird. And then today, it was overcast, a little bit of light rain, then heavy rain, then really heavy rain, then holy crap. <laughs> The animals are marching two by two. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it was sunny again in clear skies. So it's been a very bizarre weather day here in the nation's capital. Yeah, we're, we're just a little lower in Kingston. And uh, the wind turned and the leaves flipped and you could smell it in the air. And I guess and just, it, it was like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And one or two little drops and then, you know, nothing. So it's just, but, oh my, around the time where it was coming in around one thirty or two, I, mm -hmm. I could not stay awake. Wow. This, and when it passed and it's like, then I was like wide awake again like this, but I was, I, I, yeah, I just, for about two, three hours, I just wanted to stretch out and sleep somewhere. Yeah. I get, yeah. I totally understand that. It's, yeah. it's, uh, and I couldn't, <laughs> Because we were running errands. <laughs> I was like literally in the car, just like falling asleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, weird weather. I'm your host, yeah. the Eager Beaver. Pronounce he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And my heart is just so happy that you have joined us again and that you have given us, uh, that you're lending us your ears uh, one more time because, you know, you're the gift of your attention is something we cherish very, very, very much. Of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com because, well, you always need friends in your corner and they are very, very good friends. On this episode, um, it is even less scripted than usual. Um, we were hoping to do an interview today, and we were not able to uh, coordinate our schedules with our guests, unfortunately. Uh, but since we had time, we decided we would uh, record a bites. So um, here we are, <laughs> off the top of our heads. <laughs> well, it, we were, like you said, we, we did have, uh, we were going to do a, an interview and we had a couple of people lined up, but the, you know, things just didn't work out schedule wise. So since we had already, you know, carved out the time in our evening, why not just go ahead and do a show anyway? Yeah. We decided that we would spend time with you, dear kids, right? Cause exactly. It's a wonderful way to spend time. Um, so, uh, Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today? Uh, mm -hmm. good. Okay. <laughs> just, yeah, I, it's truth be told good. I, I did an ASMR thing earlier today talking about, uh, anxiety and depression, which, you know, I do that from time to time. And, um, I'm, I'm actually really good. There was a, there was a few hours today. I think it was the weather that threw me off. Cause it was like, I wanted to go for a walk, but it was pouring rain out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I like walking in the rain. You know, it can be quite nice to do that yeah. in the summer, but I was not in a walk in the rain mood today. Mm -hmm. So I sat on the couch and watched season four of Casual instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, what do you want to tackle today? Um, well, where do we begin? It's been a bizarre day. I mean, uh, news wise. I know it's <laughs> well, where does let's one start? <laughs> well, let's start with the, the big stuff because we've been checking in every now and then, even though this is a show mostly about Canadian politics, we have been checking uh, in with the January 6th hearings now and then, uh, because let's face it, if you're a political junkie, this is like, the, <laughs> as we yeah, say, Turducken, right? Yeah. Super Bowl, Triple Crown, uh, Olympic, all of gold the above, medal, uh, Grey Cup, right. Stanley Cup, you name it. They're all, they're all in there today with that uh, weirdness that is going on. Yeah. So um, the main parts, uh, the first set of hearings or public hearings are over. Uh, so we've had, uh, I believe, eight in all, including the bonus one, the surprise one with uh, Cassidy Hutchinson that was uh, thrown in there. Uh, and that's the one where people started writing on Twitter. It was like, oh, my God, he's going to swing. <laughs> Because yeah. yeah, that's the one where it became very clear that he knew that the people there had weapons and he said something, they're not here to hurt me, which is, well, how would you know that? And if you do know that, then presumably you know who they're here to hurt. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, didn't want them to go through the medical metal, metal detectors because, you know, that made his crowd smaller and, well, you know. If they had weapons, well, they weren't there to hurt him. And, uh, yeah, they were planning to, you know, march on the Capitol. And that plan was uh, set as early as uh, sometime in December. Early December. Um, so it's not an accident uh, whatsoever. Uh, and uh, then there was all the, uh, the things that he did, uh, the pressure that he put on the Department of Justice, which... You know, that's pretty bad. <laughs> and uh, basically, of the 20 people that had showed up um, at the hearings themselves to testify, 15 of them were Republicans, and some of them really well known, like you know, judges and, you know, and so these are Republicans basically nailing him. Uh, and it's having a bit of an effect. Um, because, you know, the people who don't like Trump, I mean, this is preaching to the choir, right? Yeah, I mean, very much so. Right. Uh, so who you're trying to influence with these, I mean, it, it really is Senator uh, Adam King, Kinzinger. No, these are not the senators. These are the House Republicans. Sorry. Um, yeah. So Kinzinger and Liz Cheney really trying to convince whatever share of moderate Republicans are left that something wrong has happened. And it's moved the dial a little bit. Uh, before the hearings, uh, it was uh, one-third, I believe, uh, or one-quarter of uh, Republicans that were saying that, you know, Donald Trump bared some responsibility for this. And after the first round, it, that's up to a third. Mm -hmm. um, also, for the midterms coming up, when you're looking at the generic ballot, that, uh, in addition to what the Supreme Court is doing, um, has brought the Democrats back into a tie or, you know, either above or below uh, the Republicans by one or two points on the generic ballot. So it looks like there's there's a battle, even though President Biden's, you know, personal numbers aren't all that great. It seems that people are still looking at the alternative and going, nah, brah. Right. Um, yeah. So, and, you know, and there's still a long while to go until November. And, you know, if inflation is starting to curb and, you know, things might, you know, might happen for mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. there. But the interesting part is that um, somewhere along between hearing six and eight, um, we're going to get a season two. Apparently, after Cassidy Hutchinson, apparently after Cassidy Hutchinson uh, testified, uh, apparently that really got the attention of the people at the Department of Justice. So oh, I don't know okay. if they thought that something else was going on, or they, there was a piece of data they didn't have. But the revelation, you know, that 
he indeed did want to go. It wasn't like, oh, I got bone spurs and I'm not going. That's he did want to go in Secret Service, didn't want to bring they him. Held him he, back, yeah. He and he tried to go, and then he knew everyone was armed, and 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 all of a sudden the plausible deniability is a <laughs> that fake leak is just disappearing, right? Well, the question, um, the question that that I, I have, and I'm sure a lot of people have on their minds as well, is is this guy going to do time for this? I believe so now. It certainly looks like it. I mean, her testimony was pretty damning. Yeah, yeah. Well, apparently that's what, it, apparently there was like a whole bunch of years in the Department of Justice that apparently pricked up right about that part, that time, and they started asking, you know, a, a couple more questions. Um, and apparently things seem to have been speeding up. Uh, the Department of Justice is hiring a lot more people all of a sudden. And uh, before the eighth hearing, uh, there was uh, Merrick Garland, almost never comes out to say stuff, did come out to say stuff. Uh, and one of the things he made a very clear point of saying is that no one is above the law. And we hear that all the time. And we've been saying this on the show a couple of times we've been checking in. Well, it sure seems like one person is above the law because, you know, you can do it for everyone except him, almost anything. Uh, but yeah, but did you, he was did like you very... What, did you hear what Jim Acosta had to say? This is just like an hour ago. Jim Acosta oh. was on CNN and he says, <laughs> CNN anchor Jim Acosta reacts to Trump returning to Washington this week for a speech. It's like he's returning to the scene of the crime. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, so Mark Garland was like being challenged by a reporter, but you mean like this? Is, and he goes like, I really do not know how to make it more clear. It's like mm -hmm. no person is above the law. Absolutely no person. We will go after everyone. So well, this is good. I'm um, yeah, whatever fear that people may have had about charging a former president and may that, you know, lead them to do that to someone else. I assume the Republicans next time they win are going to try whether, you know, they go after Trump or not, they are going to try and impeach the next one post <laughs> by oh, the think, presidency, yeah. right? They're, they're that far gone, right? So I, at this point, I don't let, well, I fear what they may do if we actually follow due process all the way through No, is not an argument for me, right? They're going to do mm -hmm. it anyway. So just follow the due process anyway, <laughs> right? Um, so that's uh, some, you know, some pretty, in, it, it, it looks like things are turning on that front, uh, which would be really, really, really good. Uh and uh, in addition to that, um, when we saw the um, the eighth uh, hearing, um, that one was the 187 minutes between the time uh, he finished his speech at the ellipse mm -hmm. and he uh, that video saying that you know you're special and we love you. Yeah, over three hours. Yeah, had had. Trans had, had uh passed over th three yeah over three hours before he yeah. said anything we yeah. love you you're special yeah and the thing is is that this one made it very very clear to no one beyond a doubt and it's like you know like kinzinger said it's not that you know he he couldn't react or whatnot it's that he just didn't mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right he chose not to act well if, if you everybody some of the uh the uh the, the the text messages flying back and forth between even his kids who are saying he's got to tell them to stop this right. and uh what's that asshole on fox well they're all hannity. assholes on fox news but hannity, hannity was hannity. saying yeah they were saying this we're done if he doesn't do something we're finished and i'm like oh that's good the, they know they know they know finished well yes well that's the thing right um so it's you're seeing all these people are calling to him and there literally is absolutely nothing done there is not a single phone call to any law enforcement official or national security official that was made from him there is nothing in the call logs there is nothing right but yet he was on the phone a lot mm -hmm. right he was on yeah. the phone a lot uh and now that you know also talking about witness tampering also talking you know, all the things right and apparently 
like this, and witness tampering, not only to the point of like Cassidy Hutchinson getting a call and saying, you know, like this, yeah, we know that you're loyal, and you know, <laughs> it's like, like, and you know, he reads the transcripts, right? And, and this is the thing that he's doing, right? He's been paying for the defense of a lot of people. He's, well, their lawyers take that information and bring it back to him. So that's how he's getting the transcripts, and that's why Cassidy Hutchinson changed lawyers. Interesting. Yeah, because he's not supposed to get that information. So you know he reads the transcripts, you know, like this, and he knows that you're gonna, he knows that you're gonna, you're gonna say the right thing, and you know, mm -hmm. show your loyalty, and like a mob boss. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then apparently, while all this is going on, um, apparently the authorities got a call from the Speaker of the House, I think it is in Wisconsin, because apparently while this was going on, he was still on the phone trying to get that guy to overturn last week, the election wow. result. <laughs> He's like, he can't stop. He's a one-man crime spree. It's like the statute of limitations only kicks in once you stop criming. He's still placing phone calls now. <laughs> so um uh he's gonna swing <laughs> oh yeah gonna, he's gonna swing uh and the thing is is that apparently after cassidy hutchinson making the justice department's ears prick up well all of a sudden it seems that a lot of other people kind of saw the light a little bit so all of a sudden pat Cibaloni decide that he was going to testify and he's not Trump's lawyer, right? He's the people's lawyer at the White House, right? Yes. So all the time that he's like invoking privilege, it's like, what privilege are you invoking? Your client is the people of the United States, not yeah. the president. So it's like, what the heck? Um, but you know, uh, basic but, civics, basic civics, basic right, law. Right, right. But, <sighs> but all of a sudden he found some motivation to talk because, you know, everybody was trying to take down Cassidy Hutchinson. And I guess, you know, he couldn't let that happen or something. I, I don't know, but maybe some, some, something conscious, you know, mm -hmm. some light went on. Uh, and then, uh, so, and then of course we have Steve Bannon who suddenly decided that he wanted to try to cure his contempt charge by suddenly, and you know, I was like, yeah, I'll talk now. Uh, no, no. It's like you, you either showed contempt or you didn't. It's rather binary, and you did. And it's like, and not only did you, but you did it in such a frag flagrant, latent, and petulant and <laughs> manner that, right? So uh, basically, his uh, trial took about a day or so. Uh, the prosecution uh, basically presented two witnesses. Did you get deliver the subpoena? Yes. Did he defy it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the jury took three hours, which included lunch. So I'm guessing that was a long lunch. Maybe had a couple of Cosmos. Uh, <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> Have it your way. Uh, no, 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 that's Burger King. McDonald's. Burger King. What was McDonald's? Uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> well, you remember a couple of years ago when he had the All-American football team to the White House, and because they had a government shutdown, there was no staff, no White House staff. So Trump took money out of his own pocket. Sure, he did. Mm. And went down to McDonald's and bought trays of burgers. And, mm. and he stood there all proud under a, a painting of Abraham Lincoln in front of a a, a, a table with like... Big Macs, quarter pounders, filet of fish, McChickens, and and the, the football team gets there and and they're like, I I thought that was a joke. I didn't think this was real. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it was real, and he oh, was man. very proud of himself yes. for serving all American food, McDonald's to athletes. Guys, guys, guys who are on the a verge of going to the show, right? All American NCAA. <laughs> Here, you, you know some of their coaches were going. Their coaches and nutritionists were just absolutely losing their shit. <laughs> oh my god! I'm sorry. I should not be laughing so hard. 
But I mean, talk about a white trash president. He here he was so proud of all this food he purchased, standing there. And I'm I'm looking at the photo with him with that shit eating grin on his face. And I'm looking at the painting of Abraham Lincoln above him, and I'm thinking, Lincoln is rotating in his grave Lincoln, right go, now. Like a oh girl now. <laughs> yeah. just, this is what it's come to. That's what I wish I had the Harry Potter paintings were real. Well, have you ever seen photos of Mar-a-Lago? Mm -hmm. It is, it's literally a rundown golf club. The clubhouse itself, the furniture is falling apart. I've heard stories, people saying, oh, it's terrible. And they've shown photos. It's like, okay, so they have the squeeze bottle of ketchup on the bar. <laughs> if it's supposed to be a really expensive golf club, it would come in a serving tray, not marked with the name brand that they just bought at Walmart five minutes ago, you know? Right, with a dainty, dainty, dainty little spoon. <sighs> the guy's the guy's trash. He's white trash. Come, I look, look. I have white trash in my family. Okay, I, I, I've, I've, and somebody's going to get offended at that, but it's true. Every every white family in this country has white trash in them somewhere. I, to say otherwise is a lie. Now here's the thing. <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure if I'm approving of this kiss. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. Most most uh, trailer park uh, residents that I know actually do know how to cook a steak. And it's not burn it black and then soak it in ketchup. That's mm -hmm. what he does. That's what yeah. he does. And I have friends and family members in trailer parks. And it could be, look, we've all seen trailer park boys. We know there's elements of truth to that. But I can tell you right now, they know how to cook a steak. <laughs> So Rand, um, Randy, Randy and the boys, Randy and Ricky and, and uh, Julian would do a better job. No, no doubt. Uh, so yeah, uh, they took about three hours to decide that he was guilty AF and uh, sentencing will happen around, uh, I believe, October 11th. Uh, and uh, he was found guilty of two counts. Um, each count has a maximum of one year, a minimum of 30 days. Typically, people will get about 60 or 120 days for this type of thing. But he's been such a dick. Oh, yeah. He's he's asking for the and I, he's asking for the full two years to be thrown at him. He's I think so. He's I want to see them do it because this is so egregious. If not for this, what? Hmm. Right. Uh -uh. I mean, just, I, I, I don't know. So um, he's in trouble. Uh, and apparently if um, the big liar is going to end up in court anywhere first, it looks like very much it's going to be in Georgia. Because uh, the I thought person who's taking care of that one is, uh, uh, things have really kicked up into high gear there. And uh, Lindsey Graham may be in trouble too. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They're in Georgia. The people are talking, and uh, yeah, they. Uh, I, I I don't know what they they call it there. If it's an attorney general there as well, or but uh, I think her name is Fonny Willis. Will, Willis. She she's not messing around. Mm. She's not messing around. So of all the the little things in the fire where he may get tripped up that may be the one that's the quickest and readiest to go it will be the state charges in georgia for trying to ask for that one more vote than they need right come on guys give me a break remember that one i was like give me a break your whole life has been people giving you a break. <laughs> dude you're a one-man crime spree you're 76 and you haven't been in jail yet the reason you haven't been in jail yet is because everybody knows that you fight everything with so much money and bluster and whatnot that it's really just not worth it. But now you tried to basically overthrow the government, become install yourself as dictator. If that's not going to be motivation enough, I don't know what is. I'm just saying. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the almost the highlight of the uh, last one, and it's. I don't know how I feel about it in one way, uh, is when they showed, um, the when they basically trolled Josh Hawley. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he but, brought it on himself. Oh, yeah, he brought it on himself. But they showed that picture of him with his uh, hand up, uh, far away from the crowd, of course, protected by the, all the people. And 
his little safe area. And then they showed him just scurrying inside on the video when things hit the fan. And of course, that was followed up by somebody, you know, taking that clip and, you know, layering on yakety sacks from Benny Hill over it. <laughs> uh, and apparently, in the hearings itself, uh, that moment of uh, those two clips of Josh Hawley running uh, from the people he raised his fist to a little earlier, uh, provoked some guffaws and laughs in the actual room. Oh, really? It, yes, it was the only moment of laughter of the whole eight, tr- eight like this. I'm, and I'm they just saw running that. and everybody were just, it was like audible. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> oh yeah. So that's. Uh, I understand the hypocrisy is funny, but like they were out there to drag Nancy Pelosi by the ankles and watch her head hit each step. Boom, boom, boom. Oh boom, yeah, yeah, boom. yeah. One of the guys that's going to jail actually said that. Right? They, I'm they drag her by ankles so I can watch her head hit each step on the way down. They had every intent of of ending the lives of people that day. There was there was no joke. I mean, the guys you had, some of those clowns were dressed in full um, uh, ballistic uh, vests mm. and carrying flexicuffs and batons. And I'm like, no, they they were serious about what they were going to do. There was no no machinations that it was some sort of fantasy. They well, I mean. <laughs> They were realistic yeah. in what they wanted, the, the fantasy they wanted to carry the out. The violence They was were well prepared. Yes, they were well prepared for it. Yeah. I mean, they, they built a gallows. Right. And rather quickly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So I guess many, many, many hands make light work. <clears throat> so, uh, so, yeah. Like, the fact that he got laughed at, that's what I mean. I'm sort of conflicted, right? It's like, this is happening in a context where people literally, really, really seriously could have died. <laughs> oh yeah. But I mean, just the, so, but yeah, it, so he's done. He's it's only a matter done. of time. It's only right. a matter of time. He's I mean, he, he's, he's, his days are numbered. Yeah. And then, and, and the I'm, I can't wait. I'm, I'm eager to see the perp walk. Oh, that's going to be so good. The perp walk of Trump, you know, he'll be weeping. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> this screaming. is the thing, right? This is our payback, right? We we endured the, him for five years and all the crap that's going on after, so, mm-hmm. right? Like this, when watching him sweat, watching the when the first charge is going to come, the first handcuffs, the per, first perp walk, you know, the eventual guilty plea. Like that's the return on investment. Yeah, just it's like right. we had to go through hell to get there. Yeah, right. Like this, so it's like. Grab your popcorn, your 3D glasses. I'm making mimosas for everyone. <laughs> it's like, this is what you've been waiting for. Oh, yeah. This is what you've been waiting for. Uh, and uh, finally, the last detail of that uh, last day of hearing uh, um, that uh, stayed in a lot of people's minds and affected a lot of people is uh, the testimony um, of someone that had apparently come back and. Um, as he was coming back, he had overheard uh, people in uh, Vice President Mike Pence's security detail basically s- screaming and crying over whatever communication they had, basically saying goodbye to their families because they were pretty sure that they were done for. Mm. Have you seen this? Show this. i got to share this because I think this is, this is uh, well, it's just, I'll just share it and, and you uh, just enjoy this headline. Who is Rapey McForehead? Republican slammed on Twitter for criticizing abortion rights advocates' looks. Matt Gates. Oh my God. Rapey McForehead. Jeez. I thought I was bitchy. <laughs> oh. I saw him. He was like talking about this thing about like. It was super 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 misogynistic he's talking about like um nobody wanting to sleep with women who look like a thumb or something yeah like, i'm like dude, dude <laughs> look in the dude. mirror dude 
I mean, have yeah. you smelt yourself lately? <laughs> oh, okay. Rapey anyway. McForehead. <laughs> so, enough about the American stuff. Uh, but yeah, just to let you know that we're going to be, be getting a season two. And here's the interesting thing I've been uh, I actually uh, found on Twitter. Uh, the guy who's actually produced the videos. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's a filmmaker, documentary filmmaker, is he not? Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess. And he had, uh, he had <laughs> put, uh, published something like, okay, you know, sort of like, okay, kids, you know, uh, this is uh, the first part of it is over uh, for the next month or so or something like that. I'm going to be relaxing on the beach and taking it easy, you know, but I'll be back in September. September season, new fall stuff. season. <laughs> yes. And I'm sitting there like this. I was like, if this was Shakespeare, we would call this foreshadowing. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> he knows what it's got. he knows what he has on the editing bay. <laughs> he knows he knows where the bodies are buried. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so in positive news, <laughs> yes. Well, I think it's particularly fitting that the first TV president, well, basically his downfall is getting a second season. Like, oh, it took me a second to clue into that story. <laughs> I was like, "What?" Well, oh, yes, you you were uh, you were playing the straight man with the long pause, and I didn't get it. Sorry, so I, I got a lot going on here. I got multiple screens that I'm monitoring stuff, so sometimes it's difficult to 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 keep everything uh, right on track. Uh, I have learned some... how to multitask, and I've gotten pretty good at it because of my day job. But uh, every now and then, something slips by. Uh, Kit, sometimes I lose my audience. <laughs> <laughs> well so uh, i've got uh, let's let's pivot real quick to sports for yes, just a split yes, second yes, let's two very positive stories first off the blue jays victory last night that but 28 to 5 what the heck was that dude i think that's everybody on the team gets a home run <laughs> <laughs> there was inside the park home run i heard there was a couple of them i think yeah it was it was bizarre i think it was about 25 to 3 at the top of the sixth inning. I was like, how, how is that even possible? Like, good God. Anyway, uh, that was a great story. And then, of course, the uh, four by 100 meter uh, men's uh, relay. Right. Gold medal. Way to go, boys. Right. Well done, gentlemen. Well done. Right. right. And Andre de Grasse didn't compete in the one, uh, or maybe he did compete in the 100. I'm not sure like this, but he, like, he didn't compete because I know the Americans swept the 100 and the 200. Um, so I know that he didn't compete. I think he didn't compete in his individual events in order to keep his best for the relay. To, so he put the team first, which is like, again, yes. good Canadian boy, right? Well, he, he was, he's, but he's had a tough season, right? Yes. Uh, injuries. He had COVID at one point and, yep, and twice. This meet, yeah. And this meet wasn't going great for him, but, uh, he, he, he really did pull it all together at the at the best possible time, right? So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, on that day, um, uh, Marco Arup, I believe, won uh, bronze on the eight hundred meter. He's only the second Canadian uh, to win a medal in the eight hundred. And unfortunately, uh, our champion gladiator Damian Warren, on the first day of the decathlon, had a hamstring injury. He was attempting to break the world record, and he had to pull out. Mm. Well, that's a shame, but he did win the gold medal in the decathlon at the Olympics. So you know, oh yes, I think you know. <laughs> that's yeah. you win the decathlon. You win the gold medal in the decathlon at the at the World Track and Field Championships. That's that's an incredible achievement. Yep. That the Olympic gold medal is just that extra little special bit, right? Because that's oh, only yeah. once every four years, right? And the uh, the athletic championships is every two years. Yeah, right. So you know, it's it's you. If you, can, if you can make it to the Olympic Games and win anything, and I've said this before, you know I've talked about this. We talked about it with our good friend Devin Hiru, and I went under, sorry, Devin Hiru, because he's from Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. uh, how I said, you know, there's something about Olympic athletes to me that uh, I, I, I can get a little starstruck for Olympic athletes. Me too. I've met, I've met a ton of hockey players, baseball players, football players. I've had drinks with a lot of these guys. Something about an Olympic athlete because there's so much sacrifice that goes into that sport. And many of those sports, there's no money in it for them. Mm -hmm. They're doing it because they love it and they want to represent the country on a, you know, on an international level. So, yeah, when it comes to uh, Olympic athletes, I, I get, 
I get a little starstruck. I'm kind of like that 15 year old boy the first time, well, 15, well, I'm going to say 12 year old boy when I met a Jean Beliveau. Mm-hmm. And he was the biggest man I'd ever seen in my life up to that point. I think he was about six foot four, which when he played hockey, that was a big, big man. Yeah. 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 Now I'm the same way Olympic athletes. I'm just, I'm starstruck. I'm in awe. Um, you know, you know, been born into a different family, that type of thing. I would have, I, I mean, I definitely would. I mean, like I was a dance student, right? I did train physically for several years. I could have just put, I could have put that dedication into an Olympic sport as well. So I knew I had the discipline. And uh, oh, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a nice little comment from Mister Otter. Um, so, uh, but yeah, Olympic. I, I, like, I'm right in the boat with you. Um, unfortunately, and this allows us to uh, make a segue. Um, uh, we're having a little difficulty when it comes to athletes um, yeah. on several fronts. Um, yeah, yeah. It started a bit with Kaylee Humphreys. Uh, she's a female bobsledder, and you know she won two gold medals for us at the Olympics. And then all of a sudden, boom, she's competing for the United States and won the gold medal in the Olympics again. Again, how and stupid been, were we? Well, she had been complaining about something going on at Bobsleigh mm-hmm. Canada, and I guess it wasn't handled to her satisfaction, and then she left. And then soon after the Olympics, I believe, uh, Bobsleigh Canada, there were some other athletes that started to complain. And then there were athletes from Gymnastics Canada that started yeah. to complain. And uh, they've recently uh, formed... Uh, a group, an advocacy group now that are really, really pressure, pressuring for some change. Uh, and then uh, we got the, oh, hi, Jen. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Eva Baron and Otter. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, I love that. Um, and then we uh, had the, um, uh, the hockey. And I believe there's a couple of other sports that happened in there too. But the hockey main Canada one that has all the attention right now is Hockey Canada. They're in and deep it trouble. Worse, and it got worse today. Oh, yes. It got worse today because the first one that we were looking at was the 2018 uh, men's uh, junior team. And apparently there's another allegation that came out yesterday of very similar things with the 2003 men's world junior team up in Halifax. And the investigation for the 2018 one in London, the London police is reopening it to see if there's anything that they may have missed. Uh, funding to Hockey Canada has been cut. Um I don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, There's a major investigation about to take place. The fit is going to hit the Shan in a very big way. And people are going to go to prison over this. They had a slush fund to pay off sexual abuse victims. From registration fees. Uh, It's like they clearly knew there was a problem and did nothing about it, but wrote checks. Yeah. That is so disgusting, it's beyond belief. And yet, there it is. There it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, and like I'm listening to this, like when this news was coming out, right? We are, that was around the time we were doing the show on workplace har- harassment and bullying with, uh, mm-hmm. with Laura. Um, well, well, some of these stories were coming out and uh, we were accumulating this stuff. So, uh, um, you mentioned uh, Devin Haru, and uh, I've been chatting with him, and he's agreed to, to come back and pay us a oh, visit. Excellent. Uh, Looking so, yeah, we're going to gonna have him on so that we can discuss what it was like going to the Olympics. Uh, and uh, he's just been to the World to Swimming Championships and the World Athletic Championships. He'll be able to tell us about that. And, yes, he will be able to we'll be able to play in the clips where in his interview where he said that he, you know, was he right or was he going to be right that the women were going <laughs> to sweep everything? And he's going to, you know, I'm going to have to say, yes, he was right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, and and there are other things, interesting stories going on in the world of sports. Uh, the Paralympians are looking for uh, equal pay for their medals. Apparently, they, the, uh, the people that go to the Olympic Games get some uh, financial compensation for the medals they bring, but the Paralympians do not. Yeah, there's a problem there because they they're just as hard, just as hard, and in some cases, even harder because they're doing so with a great deal less funding. Mm-hmm. Right. You so know, I mean, they have to quit their day job to train, and there's no money coming in, and they're still representing the country on the international stage and doing so with 
grace and dignity and, and shining above everybody that competes by winning gold medals on a constant basis. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And then we have the weird decisions by soccer Canada as well. So, you know, it's really interesting that we're having like this, you know, we're going to be talking sports with Devin and while we still have Canadians that do us proud, right. That we talked about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Hugo Wool and uh, Mike Woods at the Tour de France. And today Brooke Henderson won a, a her second Grand Slam of golf, the Evian Classic in France. It's her 12th title, and she's now all alone as the winning, winningest Canadian golfer of all time. Uh, you know, it was lots of good stuff. Uh, but there's it, it's all the yuck and the mess in the world oh, of yeah. sports seems to be coming to light. And uh, yes, we should clean house because there's you, you should not be, you know, putting your body on the line like this, your mental health, your emotional health on the line like this, and to represent your country, right? To have, you know, people make a lot of money off you mm -hmm. if you oh, happen yeah. to do really well, only to put, be put in this totally, totally, totally unsafe situation and environment. And we should not be doing that to our ambassadors. No. And, and you got to remember this starts when they're young. Yeah. This abuse goes on for decades with some, some athletes and and you know some of them never talk about it and some of them never fully psychologically recover from it and and that m makes me pose the question uh because as you know she's she's gone off the deep end jamie Saleh. Mm -hmm. i wonder if she was ever a victim you know because she i don't know if you've seen her lately but she's really really like lost her lost her mind She's, um, yeah, not, not well. Uh, okay. she's become a MAGA su Trump supporting she's gone Theo. Uh, she's gone full Theo, full Theo. Okay. Which is a shame because, you know, I, I loved her skating. Uh, you know, both my sisters yeah. were figure skaters. My mother was part of the Canadian figure skating association. So I grew up around it. And, and when I lived here in Ottawa, when I was a kid, military kid, I moved around a lot. Um, yeah. my, uh, a lot of the, the girls I went to high school with or elementary and high school with were all figure skaters as well. So I grew up watching figure skating and I love Jamie Soleil's skating. Just, she turned mm -hmm. out to be, well, her, her husband left her because she's literally gone right off the deep end. She's wow. gone full Theo Fleury. And I mean, that guy, look, at least he has an excuse. He took a lot of pucks to the head and he was a victim of sexual abuse and never talked about it. We all know. We all know, right? And it was this, you know, it was uh, uh, Sheldon Kennedy said, you know, there's another very prominent player. Well, we all figured it out eventually. Sheldon never mentioned his name. Still to this day, hasn't. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's classy, right? But, right. Uh, I mean, there's a guy who suffered for, from sexual abuse and never, never sought counseling, never did anything about it. And as a result along with, you know, multiple concussions and uh, he's, he's lost his mind and, and Jamie Soleil has followed him down that rabbit hole. And it's a shame. It's a shame. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, see, I, I didn't know too much. I mean, I, I saw like a one or two memes on the, the internet when it came to Jamie Soleil and I kind of put two and two together that something must've happened, but I didn't know the all of the details. Well, it makes me wonder if she was a victim, right? I, I'm not saying she was, but the, with with the the outlandish behavior from her in the last couple of years, it would make me think that that might be the case. Mm -hmm. And if you look at remember Lloyd Eisler and uh, Isabel uh, Brasser and Lord, Lloyd Eisler, they were a skating yep. team. They won gold medals, and they got married. And then he left her after he did uh, Battle of the Blades. Uh, yep. With or, no, it was uh, well, not, it wasn't Battle of the Blades, but it was a Battle of the Blades style show. And okay. his skating partner was Christy Swanson. Do you remember okay. who Christy Swanson was? She was the original Buffy. The original in, Buffy. Yeah. yeah, in in the film, in the theatrical film, the original Buffy. She was she was the the girl in and at the time she was a girl in, in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Which, oh yeah, I saw Ferris last. I heard Ferris last night passed out at Thirty One Flavors. Do you remember that? <laughs> anyway, uh, and I I used to like some of her movies, and I thought you know she's a very pretty lady, and I, no, she's she's nuts. I mean. She's gone right off the deep end. If you've ever seen, I was following on her on Twitter for a while. And I'm like, oh no, 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 no! I can't, this is too toxic. 
she's gone full MAGA, QAnon, down the rabbit hole. Uh, everybody that disagrees with her is a pedo. Wow. Oh, yeah, she's she's lost her shit. Yeah, Celebrities on Ice. Thank you. Stone Sea Witch. Thank you. Okay. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, uh, we look forward to, uh, to having Devin on uh, so that we can uh, talk about all these types of things. It would be really interesting, you know, particularly since, you know, he's really good on having the human aspect. It would be really interesting to see what uh, what his take is on uh, on the issues of equal pay and on uh, what's been going on with Gymnastics Canada and Hockey Canada. Did you have, uh, uh, did you have dinner earlier this evening? Yes. What uh, did you have? Uh, <laughs> I'm just looking uh, at this and going like, damn. Oh, <laughs> I did not have that. <laughs> That's uh, Ryan on his uh, on his Twitter. He's he's just joined us. He's in the green room. I'll bring him on in a sec. Um, but look at that. Like, man, oh, man. Ooh, that is nice. And, he, and he's got the Stampeders playing in the background. Bon, c'est bon, bon, son, c'est bon, son. Remember that? Oh, say bon, say bon, 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 bon. bon. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the song. Bon, si, bon. No, I don't. Sweet know. City Woman or something. Uh, was that? Yeah, it was Sweet City Woman. Yeah, that was part of the song. It was a number one worldwide hit for them in 1971. So yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of music, uh, let's do a little plug. Okay, let's you do have a little your plug. jazz show. You yeah, I do. Yeah. Today, maybe yeah, the kids I, don't know I, this about you. Well, okay. So let me. I'll bring up. I'll bring up the web page. Just give me a second here. For those who don't know, I uh, I host a jazz show. Um, I have a jazz podcast. I have a, a couple of music podcasts, but I also have a jazz a jazz podcast. And uh, give me a second here. I'll pull. Break it up. out the jazz voice. I'll break. Oh, it's well, hang on for the jazz voice. I have to switch microphones. This is the mic I use for the jazz voice because. Ooh. You have to do it a little bit differently. It's got to be very, very mellow, you see. So when I, uh, when I do the jazz show, I try and accentuate the sound of my voice like this. <laughs> anyway, here, here, here's the... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put up a link. Just a sec, I'll switch mics. I'll put up a link. Uh, here, I'll just share the page. So if, if anybody likes jazz, you can... Uh, you could tune in. Here it is, right, uh, da, 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 right here. And I often uh, write, the, write the shows when I'm writing script to uh, to to uh, to Mr. Grizzly's shows. They're uh, jazz shows. They're very good, very informative as well. And, uh, Sixty-five one-hour shows. Yeah, and each has a thing. Oh, thanks I mean, to really is... Pardon? Here, you'll see in a sec. Here, I'm just going to post his comment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I see. It's very good. I love it, Paul. I used to be in a jazz band in high school. Yes, yes. Um, so yeah, I, I I was weaned on jazz. I, uh, my mom loved it, and all my lullabies as a kid were jazz standards. So, but uh, you know, I, I like the way you do your show. You know, you uh, you you present some music. There's always some type of theme. You give us some information. You know, so for you know, it's almost basically. You know, I don't know. You've got sixty five one hour episodes. It's basically uh, sixty-five one-hour episodes. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's basically a course in jazz appreciation. Yeah, I feature five five songs, five artists every. I try and do it at least every Sunday, um, and yeah, it's just trying. It's an in-depth show. Think think of it as uh, the ongoing history of new music, but jazz. Ooh, <laughs> that's a nice way to put it. Uh, yeah, give it a shot. Let's uh, let's bring Ryan in because he was kind okay. enough to join. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Hello, Not Mr. a good idea. You should have left me in the green room so I could listen because I was enjoying the show. Oh. <laughs> How are you today? Uh, wasted. Thank you. Nice. Uh, actually, yeah. At this at this point, uh, we uh, we had a wonderful afternoon out in the sun. We were uh, wondering if the storm was going to take over our endeavors today, and it didn't. And uh, we. Um, enjoyed ourselves uh, a little too much i think at this point at 9 30 at night where i'm ready to hit the sack but i didn't realize you guys were on live i'm like oh good you know it's nice to see you guys so i figured well, you maybe know, i would it's... come and, and base myself a bit while i was uh <laughs> chatting with you you fellas how are well, you it was like it, it, good good like i said we we uh, had had discussed we'd kicked around the idea over the last couple of days we were trying to get one or two different individuals for an interview this evening uh, mm -hmm. and both uh i'm i'm ex they 
they have said that they want to do a show with us. Oh, yeah. uh, it's just a matter of lining up schedules. And I'm really looking forward to both of them because they're both pretty nice. prominent Canadians. Um, different, Is it different Jamie Sallet the and uh, Theo Fleury, <laughs> Theo Fleury. by any chance? <laughs> we, we can say who they are. <laughs> well, go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Beaver, okay. please. Um, what do you have? Uh, the first one. The, the first one is uh, his name is Mr. Uh, Murray Billet. Uh, he's a very, very, very um, important activist in the the LGBTQ community, uh, nice. and he was part of uh, not the legal team, but he was very, very involved in uh, being support uh, for Delvin Vrind, uh, which we had the Delvin Vrind case, which is the one that went to the Supreme Court that I believe legalized uh, same sex marriage. Or that was the decision, uh, the the be the big key one there, and mm -hmm. uh, so and uh, it's the twenty fifth anniversary of the trial this year and the twenty fifth anniversary of the decision next year, uh, and he's also been uh, done some uh, work with uh, the Edmonton police, uh, and being actively and opening op openly out uh so he has definitely has a lot to, to talk about and you know basically just a you know a, a life well lived modern right. day hero yeah that's exactly. a lot to talk about exactly. uh and uh the other person who has uh I, I won't say yet that he's agreed to be interviewed but i've been trying to get him for a while and i asked him please come to interview and he has given me his email address so i'm guessing that he's so he hasn't said yes but we're in talks and that's charles adler Oh yes, because he has Chucky been rocking is my amazing world. Amazing on Twitter. Ever since he actually left yep. the airwaves, he uh, it's like Charles un uncensored, Charles unglued, and Charles uh, yeah. untethered. I should say he's been yeah. so so yeah. good. Yeah. Such a great guy. Yeah, and um, cards on the table. He helped me once with something. Uh, at one point, I had a situation, and I was like hoping to bring some visibility and he was one of the two people uh luke lebrun of uh, press progress was the other uh luke who lebrun helped is bring a great some dude yeah absolutely yeah. and we tried to get him uh on an interview for something and uh he said uh, not for the thing <laughs> <laughs> Which i think, I, think he I miss that. charles on the air i he was he so was one I. of my favorite shows to he was one of those zone out shows for me where i would put him on and it would just it made a lot of sense. He was he was very fair and balanced and very centered. Mm -hmm. And when it was wrong on either side, he would yep. call it out. Yep. And he would yep. call it out loud. And yep. I miss that. And uh, full disclosure, we've had talks in the background where we wanted to try and somehow figure out a way to approach Charles about a podcast. And uh, oh. yeah, so hopefully we can uh, we can we can make some inroads down oh, the road because. Imagine him uncensored and untethered on mm -hmm. like on the air mm -hmm. rather than Twitter. I yes. mean, I'd listen mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. Well, so I'm a fanboy. I, so yeah, he, he of respect. Had, yeah. So he had put yeah, put something and uh, cuz I I, I what, what had happened originally is that when we had our interview with John Stopford about what was going on at uh, um that senior cares hero home in uh, Kincardin. Mm -hmm. Um right. I I had wrote to him. I said, you know, this is a story. Would you be interested in it? And because at that point we were still relatively new. Uh, and, you know, I mean. It was just before David, we joined the network too, right? Just before we joined the network, hadn't, right? Hadn't gnawed your beaver teeth down yet? Yeah. You were still well, I mean, the, cutting your teeth? Yeah. We, well, I mean, we gave the profile we could with the audience we had, right? Right. Um, Which was good. Yeah. But, you know, Charles has a bigger audience and I figured this might be a story he would right who he mm -hmm. would like uh and it's like i don't have my show anymore like, what yeah and it's like yeah is, is, is this by choice and it's like short answer yes <laughs> which is always a story there and i said well you know if you ever want to come and talk i have a podcast now and, you know and nothing uh and then uh, the other day he posted something on twitter and it's like it's like charles you're rocking my world with what you're writing <laughs> please come on my show and talk about this. it's like you helped me once you know I'll, uh and all i got was the email address as you were that, you know what that's that's a that's a gateway that's a that's an invitation for sure and charles i'm sure will go and do his due diligence and look and see what you guys have been up to and oh yeah this is right up his alley this this kind of a show is is exactly what 
what he's uh, he's all about. So yeah, I I would I would be uh, please keep us in the loop because I'd love to know when that happens because I, I I would be again a fanboy to watch that because I miss him. <laughs> I miss him a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he yeah. he had, some voices deserve to be amplified. He has one. Agreed. Agreed. Oh, yes. Yeah. What else are we talking about here? What's going um, on? What's happening? Why are you live? What's going on on the network tonight, fellas? What are you guys <laughs> talking about today? Well, you I'm know, totally just... down. I've got about 10, 15 minutes before uh, my wife uh, divorces me. So let's, uh, <laughs> oh, let's do that. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's pack it in here. <laughs> What's going on? Well, it did, did, there was a pretty nasty storm that blew through Ontario today. Uh, different parts of Ontario. Uh, yeah. Like I said, it, I said at the top of the show, it was a little bit of drizzle, and then I can't see across the street, and then it's clear skies. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Very Same thing bizarre. happened in our town as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I was. Uh, I, I went out this morning. Um, we we had some friends over last night as well, uh, and left the backyard in disarray with certain items that probably shouldn't have been left out knowing that there was rain coming and uh went oh shit it rained but it rained for literally 45 seconds but in an amount that probably should have taken half a day to to produce and uh then the rest of the day was it was threatening the entire day and i was like okay so we kept watching the weather app because we we were going to a a a little uh little get together at, at at a family friend and um I went, uh, like, do we go? Uh, are we going to sit in the house? What are we doing here? Have you guys noticed that weather prediction, even during the same day, is now becoming very tough? Like, yep. w- and it's not something that we've ever been that um, accustomed to when it comes to, yeah. to trying to plan your day on the day of, let alone three or four days out. Like, we have a camping trip planned for two weeks from now and I, and it's like oh what's the weather what's the 14 day look like it's like don't even bother don't even no, bother no, anymore because no, no, it's no. gonna change right so but today was uh today was definitely an anomaly and it was hot it was so hot but climate and, change is a myth right yeah of course yeah no and that's and that's kind of my point here like why like what happened to the point where you could wake up in the morning and at least look at the thing and say it says 60 percent chance of rain it's gonna rain i'm not gonna make plans Today, it in our area said eighty percent chance of rain at like two o'clock, and it was blue skies. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, so, it is well. The bizarre. storm cells. I think the storm cells are much smaller now. Like they're m- much much smaller storm cells because when intense. so when we were driving out to to North Gore last night to go to my buddy's place for a barbecue, and uh, we had to pull over on the four sixteen. Mm. because yeah. you couldn't see 20 meters in front of you. It was raining that hard. Wow. So we called him and said, yeah, we're going to be a little late. And he goes, why? Well, we had to pull over. Why did you have to pull over? Is everything okay? No, there's a major storm. He goes, what are you talking about? It's clear skies. <laughs> and he was like <laughs> not 15 minutes from where we were. It's wild. 15 minutes, clear skies. Bizarre. Yeah, and then it, it, did, it reminds we got me there, of... and it drizzled for two minutes, and then it was blue skies. Yeah, Very it strange. reminds me of Florida. Like, I don't know if you guys spent any actual like a length oh, of yeah. time in Florida. Uh. In Florida, you can be guaranteed an <laughs> afternoon monsoon. Mm-hmm. Mm. But yeah, round four. the beginning of the day is fine. The end of the day is fine. That you plan your siesta in that that monsoon time, and it was you can almost set your watch to it in certain parts of the year, and that's what it's starting to feel like here. But oh, yeah. we do, we shouldn't have that it's, here. It's That's not, not normal for us. It's not supposed no. to be here, <laughs> no. you know. So, yeah. Um, Ryan, since I have you here, sure. Um, I there's a couple little stories that have sort of ha- happened around, and I was just wondering what you might uh, think of them. Um, there have been people that have been trying to pump the idea that uh, the Liberals are really, really itching for a snap September election. <laughs> I don't know where the hell that's going Who are those people? Uh, the CPC. Yes. Skippy. Yeah. And this with the Q. Ah, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Quandis. <laughs> Tell me, Quandis, Quandis, Quandis. Yeah, no, she's... um. And it's it's on brand. It's on brand, Douglas. It's uh, it's it's it. 
let's make it so that people are unsaid, like they're they're unsteady, they're unsettled, they feel uncomfortable in what's going on around them right now. I think anyway, it's the only thing they have, and it really is the only thing they have, is fear. It's a fear pandering party now, That's and all, all they do is dish out something that is to provoke an emotion in you of uncertainty. And that's all they can do. And and I'm not saying people need to be road scholars to figure it out. The normal average person will hear something like that and go, what the fuck? Another election? We just had a fucking election, you know, and might not dig past the headline and then think, you know what? And, and it works. That's the problem. <laughs> 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 it's like the, it works. The uh, Where is this from? A picture it's just, of, uh, it's a Twitter. The, the prime minister's head superimposed. I guess this is a cardinal. It says <laughs> holding the in. holding the lawn torch. Here, I'll, I'll, you, it's you can see oh. the uh, the tweet there. Let me just blow it up a bit for you so you can see it a little bit better. <laughs> is that your desktop, Paul? Your desktop yeah. gives me anxiety with that oh. amount of tabs and bookmarks. What the hell are you doing? Are you I okay? monitor a lot. Oh yeah, I just monitor Jesus. a ton of stuff. Jesus, <laughs> when, when we're doing shoot. that's when like we're doing a show. Or- I'm monitoring. That's like eight like, or nine YouTube channels open. Oh yeah. Are you? Yeah. I'm monitoring. Should we call stuff. somebody for you? Or no, I'm good. <laughs> this is this is what I do in my day job. God Seriously, damn. in my day job, I will I will ha- like I have three screens in front of me and usually a laptop. It causes I'll me be, to smoke. I'll be monitoring three meetings on three different screens and then watching call lines. It's just a part of my job. Oh, so nice. I got used to it. So now I can yeah. have multiple tabs open to monitor stuff. Well, I need you, you know? to come and help me with my due diligence for my stories that I write for the blog. Uh, Cause uh, I don't have that. I've got the attention span of a gnat and um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty wild. But uh, back, sorry, back to your point. I think, uh, I think it's just, it's one oh one CPC one oh one. Make them scared, make them un- unsure, and then offer them a um, a solution, quote unquote, solution to their uh, to their fear. It's to soothe that smooth brain. To to listen, we this is wrong. We are the only answer. And the problem is, problem and is. and I try, like, and I do. I try. I'm not. I'm not a like. Full disclosure, I'm not a Justin Trudeau fan. I don't like him. I don't like him as a politician. I don't think he's done a... He's a virtue signaling um, politician. It, it is what he's, a, he's a factory politician who uses virtue signaling for... And yes, don't get me wrong, a lot of good things have come from the liberal government, but I don't think they come from him. I think they come from his cabinet, and his cabinet does a very good job. Um, but... He's on the opposite side where he liberals play a, a long play and a long play in a, in a time of crisis is no good. I don't think, um, That's I, I my just think it's set up. <laughs> That's how I work. Uh, go ahead. Show off you dick, <laughs> whatever. Fine. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great set. Look at you. It works. It works, uh, you know. But so I, 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 just think, you... I, I just think I think it's uh, I think it's 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 like I say it's just it's PC one hundred and one. It's uh, it's it's time to to fear make them fearful and then give them uh, a, a salve like a bomb to mm-hmm. rub on it, which is freedom. The word freedom apparently yeah. just soothes all ails, and um, and and it's rinse and repeat. Well, one but of the comments the- that I need to make uh, that, that nobody seems to ever point out, and I'm going to make it now because I think, I think it should be said. Now, yes, the virtue signaling is a bit much for most people, myself included. Yep. However, however, a lot of good has come from it because the opposite side of the coin is, you know, his sunny ways and his virtue signaling oftentimes gets good results by getting people to do good things instead of riling, ginning up the base like skippy does yeah and getting him screaming freedom in the streets and how their you know their freedoms have been robbed and that he's a dictator and and that we live in a communist we live in a communist dictatorship okay now 
let me let me explain how those things work. One yeah. doesn't work while the other one is in place. So <laughs> that's, that, isn't it funny? I had the most awesome communist weekend ever. Just so you guys know, like right? it was incredible. I went and bought meat at the market at like different varieties of meat from the market. I was not excluded into a class system of what kind of meat I could buy. It was fantastic. Right. Um, I no, I I agree. I I find it inert. Mm-hmm. His 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 virtue signaling is inert, if anything, with a um, maybe a side dish of some positivity on on awareness to an issue. Right. But as for government action, he's a lame duck in a lot of senses, right? And I'm not talking about a lot of people always point to the clean water thing. He is the first prime minister in history. In history, he has the most amount of boil water orders rescinded yes even though he did not do what he said he and he made he made a promise that he couldn't keep and that's absolutely true there's no denying it but Mm -hmm. at the same time it's not like he's not trying to do that so i won't fault him for the Mm -hmm. effort on something but that's just one issue okay that's one issue yes (laughs) but the rest of it i don't think i don't have i i don't want to say i don't have faith in him i do have faith in in his in his in his agenda i just mm-hmm. i don't as a, as a leader and even with centrist he's not hitting the mark with centrist anymore it's um it's gone to it's gone to a weird a weird place and a lot of that has to do with mainstream media a lot of that has to do oh, with yes. the rhetoric coming out of did you see the did you see the report the actual foi report that came out of twitter about liberals and conservative twitter no yeah 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 yeah, so 146% uh, as opposed to like, I can't remember what the liberal 43. one. The liberal one was like, th- yeah, it was very low. Um, whereas something would get amplified, 146% more chance of a conservative talking point to be amplified in Canada. Not 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 MAGA shit, nothing, mm-hmm, no, nothing mm-hmm. like that. But yeah. in Canada, 146% more of a chance that a, a cons- Canadian conservative talking point would have been amplified on Twitter rather than a liberal or a centrist talking point. And Twitter doesn't, and, and their response was, we don't know why this is happening. Everybody knows why it's happening. They know why it's happening. They just can't say that we've allowed Russian bots and bot farms and to, to, to infiltrate it. And that's who, because the liberals don't play that dirty trick, which I'm starting to say, you know what, assholes, it's time to, it's time to play maybe dirty. put the mud boots on. And, uh, and, and head into that, that realm because you need it just for the fact that that's the arena you're in now. The arena you're in is controlled now by people that pay to have messages amplified. And yeah, it's, is it immoral? Absolutely. Is it reprehensible? 100%. Is it necessary? You're fucking right. It is at this point. So I think, I, I think that's where we're losing uh, the the ground for somebody that's a little left of center uh, when it comes to support, re- whether you like Justin Trudeau or not, you're losing you're losing that 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 foothold. You're losing that that space uh, to somebody that's that's literally buying a megaphone and <laughs> using that megaphone. And they've been doing it Absolutely. for years. We've known that this has been happening for years, and nobody wants to acknowledge it. And Twitter obviously doesn't want to admit to it, I understand, because it's literally what, and don't get me wrong, I hate giving the guy credit, but Elon Musk was right. Yeah. Twitter is yeah. filled with bots. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I hate admitting, admitting that he's right, too. But he's right. Hey, look, a broken yes. clock is right twice a day, right? Correct. Yeah. That's what I'll sell that to myself as well. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, it's it's, and you've seen the tweet, uh, the tweet occasionally. What do you do when you agree with the worst person, with the thing the worst person you know just said? You know, how are you supposed to feel about that? And every yep. now and then, that happens, and it's like, yeah, crap. But it, but if you don't admit it, then you yeah. know what? You're just as bad as the extreme whatever Agreed. side you're against, and Agreed. that's the thing. You need to keep an open mind. There are good political conservative i'm not going to say progressive anymore but political conservative talking points there are don't get me wrong there are policies on the pc side that do make sense to a lo- the longevity of a democratic nation absolutely 100 mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. all no. definitely not all some 
Well, and, 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 and we've can't... long since said we need a good, strong, healthy, progressive conservative party in this Correct. country. Correct. Progressive. Yeah. Full, yeah, fiscally, fiscally conservative and socially liberal is. But you know what? It's like finding a fucking unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yep. So. Yeah. So uh, for the kids who are uh, uh, listening and didn't uh, or not watching, uh, just put up a. Uh, I'll put it a back table up. of uh, what the long-term drinking water advisories where it stands at the moment. And uh, even though they weren't able to get it done in five years or four years, as they promised, I think it was five, I think, uh, 20, there's, there's only 31 remaining. Yeah. So, uh, and and there were, there's about 130 that have been lifted. So somehow. he's done an incredible job in that sense. Now, Absolutely. and you're right. Making the promise was probably not realistic. Uh, but then when COVID came along, it, it destroyed any possibility of making that happen. Of everything. Right? Of everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I mean, and despite COVID, I mean, he is getting it done. Yeah. 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 I also don't, I, I'd also like to see um, a, a case of pop for $40 uh, go away in some of those remote communities. But uh, yeah. let's take it step by step. You're right. Um, that, that it's. <sighs> Like I say, I don't, I don't, I don't hate, I don't hate the man. I don't hate mm -hmm. the man like these people do with that vitriol and this un. It's it's so unjustified the hatred to towards him. If you don't like him because he has nice hair, fine. Yeah. Just say you're a superficial idiot, Asshole. and that's what you do. That's how you judge um, a democratically elected government. That's fine. You're allowed to do that in a democratic yes society. Mm -hmm. That's it's totally. You're allowed to be petty. Yeah, you have a yeah. right. So right be petty. If you're going to be petty, be Tom Petty. petty. <laughs> Tom Petty. That's Ooh. what I've always said. I like my wife. Actually, that's my wife. <laughs> free, free <laughs> falling. I just wish. I just wish people would uh, would 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 put that aside for a second and just realize that the only reason why we are where we are, they need to. But we're in a like I say, we are in, and I don't care what anybody said. They're saying, well, no, we're teetering on. No, we are in a post truth reality now mm -hmm. and and that's mm -hmm. where we are with it with a certain section of our of our uh, our populace and they they don't live in the same reality because they've lived in a literal silo of uh, and huffing their own farts the entire time where i've i've said it mass uh, somebody tell me about mass deprogramming because we need to figure out how that happens i don't know how that's going to work but okay. it's uh it's it's bad I have oh, a yeah. question because I, I, I want to ask this because this is something that, that I mean, I, I, I hear this all the time and something for some reason I can't wrap my hand around and I can't understand, but I've heard it from Lachlan and I've heard it from you and I've heard it from uh, James DeFiori. Like, what is the deal with people having trouble with virtue signaling? And I'll tell you why, because where I'm coming from as a communications person, one of mm -hmm. the first things that we learn in communications is that you cannot not communicate. It's impossible. Even if somebody's like sitting there and telling you something and you're, you're trying to look like I'm not communicating anything, right? you're communicating something. Of course you are. Right? It's impossible to not communicate. Every, so given that, everybody is signaling something. I'm, virtually, I'm virtue signaling right now. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. The content yeah, mm -hmm. that I choose, the guests that I have, you know, the topics, you know, what positions I take upon them. I guess I am signaling to everybody what my virtues or my values are. So it's like to me, virtue signaling is just like just like it's telling people what you believe, which is when did that become wrong? And, and, and I've also I, I said that about the woke. Like when people say, Oh, you're oh yeah, okay, you're so woke. It's like as as opposed to what? As, as walking through life. Sleep? Yeah. yeah. Right? Sorry, so, go ahead. So like this. And I mean, nobody accuses the conservatives of virtue signaling, probably because everything they signal has a lack of virtue, but I mean, they are signaling their virtues. 100%. So mm -hmm. if everybody is signaling virtue, it's like everybody's talking about Justin Trudeau, like he's the only person in the damn game who's virtue signaling. Everybody's virtue signaling. Every time you put out a report like this, the Green Party point. goes, oh my God, it's never enough because you didn't cut out the, that's virtue signaling. It's like, let's stop the world. Let's let everybody like just stop gravity. Everybody flies off the planet, you know, like this. We cut off, you know, like this. And we'll deal with that later because you, you have to, that's virtue signaling. And it's like, uh, you know, we're going to, 
aren't you cutting that gas tax? You know, like, don't you care about those poor people suffering that need to drive? That's virtue signaling. That's so it's like, why is he the only one that's getting slapped around for virtue? At least he's signaling decent, things. decent, decent things. You're right. I, I, when did we get pissed off at people who want to signal? I want to do something good. I think You're, the outrage machine I has caused why everybody that. hates him for the, for virtue signaling. Why? You're right. You know, you have, you have, you have a really good, we hate people who want to do good. You have a good point. You have a really good point. But again, like we'll go back to look at uh, my favorite example of this. My favorite example is, do you remember during the September election, just beforehand, he was doing a campaign stop in, um, I believe it was Concord just, uh, outside of Toronto. And he was mauled by like, protesters and he wasn't able to actually make the the stop because there was actual physical violence happening and mm -hmm. he had to abandon the campaign stop ended up stopping his bus at a park I th and uh, don't quote me i think it was like north york or concord he stopped his bus and did an impromptu unscheduled yep. press conference do yep. you remember that and everybody loved it. He and he was fucking sport. pissed. Like, he yeah. was mad. And you saw, for the first time since 2015, the real Justin Trudeau on a camera. If you gave me that guy every day in front of the House of Commons, on TV, when he's doing prepared statements, if you gave me that guy who was that fired up and that raw and that emotional about you know, this is not right. You got the, the, just the, the delivery alone was so unprepared. And do you remember the, remember the, uh, the, the right likes to, to bring up the water, the water carton thing all the time, how yeah, he doesn't yeah, know yeah. how to fucking talk. And it's true. When you have a teleprompter, it's, it's very tough to talk. You guys know mm -hmm. you've done it. I've it's done difficult. it. It's difficult to stay on message when yep. you have talking points that are scrolling past you and maybe you haven't gotten through one and it passes you by and you're like, what the hell did that just say? I'm trying to remember. That's how he, but if you gave him a camera, a microphone and just hit on and go, that's the guy I want leading my country. When he has that virtue in his heart and that in his soul, that what he wants for Canada and he can actually deliver that message I want that. I don't want the pre-written script. I don't want him hugging and kneeling with a fucking teddy bear at a mm -hmm. at a cross for a photo op. I don't want that. I, I like I that is literally useless to me as a Canadian. It's useless to me as somebody that I, that looks for results in some sort of a tangible solution to a problem. I, save save the dollar store teddy bear. Go out and do the thing. And then mm -hmm. when something when somebody blocks you in the house. I want you to go outside onto a camera and say, these assholes are not letting me do what I want to do. I want to do this. I want to make sure that this is the way it's supposed to be for them. He's been too, and I don't know if it's a, if it's a. He's got a longer fuse than his father. We've gotten too, we've gotten too polite. You're absolutely right. If he had that, he, if he had that tact and that execution that his father had in what he's doing today. I'll guarantee you, you would you would sway that that center would fall to the left mm -hmm. on on, oh, yeah. on on a lot of issues. I just hate that he's so manufactured when he gets in front of a camera, and I understand why the right picks up on that and runs with it and calls him a virtue signaler because that is virtue signaling in the negative connotation. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's my point. He has it in him. He's trying to do the right thing, but the minute that he goes and talks to the entire country, he's he, he's a he's a, a powdered, um, prepared, and polished asshole in everybody's view, and the, and that's including some liberals would say mm. the same. Oh, that yeah, yeah. day in the park when he got out and he was pissed, that's my guy. That's my I would vote for that guy until he was no longer wanted to be the prime minister. That's my guy. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. like I don't like theatrics. I don't like theatrics in politics. There's enough theatrics in the House of Commons. There's enough theatrics in, when 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 debates are happening and question periods are on. That's what that's for is for theatrics. And if you and that's why nobody fucking watches it because it's so gross and it's disgust. Like you you watch I that, you're like, what did I just I watch? Yeah, you I can't, can't watch it. I can't watch it either. 
that's what that's for. But when you're out trying to talk to the act, you're talking to each other there. And if you guys want to like, like tickle each other's balls by doing that, and, and that's fine. You want to, you want to blow sunshine up each other's assholes. Fine. Do it inside that little house. When mm. you come out and you're talking to me, I want you to talk to me like I would talk to you if we were sitting in a bar having a beer and you say, this is what I want to get done. This is what I need to do to get it done. Can you help? Do you support that? What do you think? You know, like bring it back to the level of commonality. That's why I always said, you know, who should be the speech writers for every, every single politician comedians. Imagine George Carlin, George Carlin would write, take the policy, rip it apart, write a speech and say, here, go deliver that. Yeah. Because he spoke, people like that speak to the common man. They mm. speak to a common guy like me. I'm a dumbass. You know what I mean? Like I, I want it fed to me like I'm a, like I'm, I'm very dumb and that's now. Okay. I see what you're doing. Not lights, camera action, you know, take five. We just watched the, the, the January 6th committee hearing where they had the yeah. Trump out and he's got to be dying. Like imagine that yeah. ego motherfucker looking yeah. at those outtakes going, they were never supposed to see that, like that kind of thing. That's what I love. Considering how he was slamming the podium just for making a mistake on himself. Yeah, now that everybody gets to see it. Ooh, that's what I mean, right? So, take that shit out. Take that shit. Come and talk, like on a po- like we do these long form podcasts. If you came here and you talked about your your what you needed to get done in a in a format like we are having a, a discussion today. Yeah, that's that's my guy. Like that's my guy right there. And yeah. yes, he has nice hair. Other than the last haircut, you're absolutely correct. The guy you want to you want to hate on, <laughs> guarantee you he wouldn't have a, as many haters as he does if he just took that script, threw it in the fucking garbage, looked at the camera, and said, "Guys, this is what's going on." Well, and he has yeah. done that on a couple of occasions, uh, specifically um, during COVID, and I think it was in was it in direct response to the january 6th thing i can't remember but there was the question where they said what what do you think about what uh president trump had to say and he paused for 30 seconds before he spoke yeah Yeah. and that was straight from the heart right off the top of his head carefully chosen words and Mm -hmm. as it should be in a time like that you're asked about the most powerful leader in the world your next door neighbor so you 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 very you have to be very diplomatic in what you your balls in his hands yeah, yeah. And, and and he showed who he can be when he goes off script and that was a great example of it mm-hmm. and, you know and, but of course the conservatives will always pick on him for those box butter water box thing water thing yeah boxes. yeah well, and we all have thing, those we all have those there's another thing you have to remember too his first language is french yep. so uh, when your first language is another language you think in that language, and then you have to quickly translate in your head. And, and, and as Mr. Beaver Douglas here can attest to, he speaks mm-hmm. both French and English. So it's hard to switch back and forth sometimes, and you can stumble over your words, especially when you're searching for the word. And we all do it. But because yeah. you're a politician on a national stage, they're going to put it on loop ad nauseum. Yeah, you're on. Yeah, you're on. You're on. Right. And, and anybody that, that speaks French and English will tell you when he does speak French, the message is better. It's yes. always better in French. Always better. Yeah. It's, and it's, 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 you know, a lot of people don't understand that point. So I, I get that. But he speaks English very well. Oh, like, he I'm does. not I going mean, yeah. to no, offer no. him any sort no, of no. excuse. No, no. If he wasn't reading it off of a teleprompter or off of a script or yeah. something that he was, had talking points fed to him before he went on camera even without a teleprompter but had them in his head if he's like yeah I, and just 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 talk just talk you don't need to be that that guy you don't need to be the polished um uh, uh packaged individual when you're when you're delivering a message of such importance it doesn't mm-hmm. matter it doesn't matter how you like it, it, it what matters is is the integrity and the honesty and the 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 uh authenticity sorry, think, yeah like just the the way it's delivered is 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 very it's very important. So I understand why the right does it because it's it's low hanging fruit, mm-hmm. it's easy, it's mm-hmm. easy to pick on, and like we watched it, you could see it with Joe Biden. Joe Biden has a literal oh, yeah. fucking speech impediment. Yeah, he literally. cannot like he has a stutter, and they can't let it go. You know, they like pick even on though him for it. 
What yeah. the hell? Why so, are you picking on somebody for something that he's worked his whole life to overcome? Because and, that's you know, what they do. He's done pretty good for himself. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. He's the president. <laughs> he kind of made it there. Okay? I think he's overcome, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so I, I and that, and this is what I mean. I think the biggest our biggest stumble in the last 20 years in politics and democratic politics is messaging, especially with the the onslaught yep. of social media. It's messaging and we haven't adapted to messaging. We haven't mm-hmm. caught up to trying to uh to thwart the fake news bullshit like i know c11 is a a very contentious thing Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and and censorship bills like whatever like uh, we can go on and on but then all of a sudden now we're in the weeds and we're outside of the that what we're talking about is the message it's just the message he literally doesn't you don't need anything you can just a camera uh go on your phone just hit live on your phone and go talk to people hey you ever seen him do that? So, lots of politicians do it. Mm-hmm. Why doesn't the PM just like, guys, it's me. I'm here. Just had dinner. Um, hey, listen, we're going to um, fix dr- the drinking water thing. Um, this is what we've done so far. Hey, got to go. Kids are getting ready for bed. Bye. Yep. You, you well, give me a like- guy like that. That's your, that's a man. Like that's a, that's a dad. That's me. That's yeah. me. Yeah. If I yeah. grab my phone and I was in his job, you know what I mean? So yeah, well, whenever well, he's like, tried oh. to do that, they've already, they've shit on him for that too. When he brought his kids out to teach them, okay, there's the flooding in Ottawa. Let's bring the kids out to sandbag and go, this is a photo op. No, this is a father teaching his children about volunteering. And yes, yeah. you're going to exploit it for a photo op because he's the goddamn prime minister. You know, he gets shit on for things that I don't think he deserves. And there I are agree. other things that he should get shit on for that he doesn't get. Like, and the one that troubles me is they go, well, he can't do this. I go, you ever watch a town hall with him? Yeah. Anybody wants to show up, shows up. Anybody wants to ask a question, asks a question. You yeah. go to a conservative town hall, the list is vetted, and the questions are vetted. Karima gets arrested. Exactly, right? <laughs> and that is the difference right there. Yeah. Oh, you're, here, here's a stamped written invite. Oh, you can't come yeah. in. You're under arrest. Uh, wait, wh- huh? So there's a big thing. I mean, <laughs> you've got literally scripted questions from the audience that you're right. Skippy knows is coming. Where, and when I've seen them deliver some really hard questions to Trudeau in town halls. Oh, yeah. And he's stumbled with some of them, but most of them he's given a really solid answer to. And, and he's not getting the, the, the uh, credit he deserves for that because, well, he, he, didn't, he didn't answer all of the questions. Well, it's a two-hour time period. How can you possibly do that? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they're always going to find something wrong with whomever, whomever the prime minister is. It doesn't matter yeah. the party. It yep. doesn't matter the person, whomever the politics. prime minister is, they're going to yep. find a problem with everything they do. And it's, it's dirty politics. It's the game. I get it. But sometimes it just gets really exhausting. Like that election. I know Douglas loved the election. The, the what was it, 90, 80, 85 or 87 days or what was it? The last one with Harper yep. when Trudeau first got in in 2015. Yep. Mm-hmm. I hated that one. I hated it because it went on for too long as far as I was concerned. And the reason I say that was be- it was because of the vitriol and, and the toxicity going back and forth on social media, on emails, in the pub. And again, I'm in Ottawa, so yeah. it's in my face. Yep. It's in my face here. So, and we go into the pub and people were starting to yell at one another in the neighborhood pub. I'm like, okay, this, I don't ever want to see an election period run that long ever again. Because it was it was poisonous, and again, you know, Mr. Beaver here has it for a different reason. Because he can, he he's a comms guy, he's a pol- uh, a political guy from the sense that this is what he studied. So for mm-hmm. him, this is like the Super Bowl, right? Well, and, not and, only and it is Super Bowl, but I believe that people need an amount of time to actually oh. judge people, and a thirty six day doesn't give have time for enough accidents to happen to see how people handle Agreed. the stress like that. Like, like, and I, I agree with that. Two years, like the United States, that's freaking ridiculous, but. Yeah. You know, sixty something days. That 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 was fine. That was fine for me. You know, like you don't have to campaign every day. You can take a day off here and there. Well, that that's fine. But mm-hmm. just for enough time for things to like. I remember. See this when we're talking about the twenty four hour news thing, right? When I was when I was a kid, right? You had your morning edition paper. You had your evening edition paper. You had your yeah. Canada AM. You had your six o'clock news. You had your, your noon six and eleven o'clock news, and that was about it. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and so if something happened one day like this and, you know, it came your three o'clock afternoon paper came out and it, it made that you had to wait till the next morning. Yeah. Stuff had time to happen behind the scenes. 
right? Yeah. Because you've got someone giving you your take right away like this and another take and another take and another takes. People don't have time to stop t- talking about themselves. We're covering the news breathlessly, right? Yes. So there's no, t- there's no time for things to happen and You're everything right. ends up being looked at in a vacuum, right? Oh, they did this this time. Yeah. Okay. But put it in the damn context right everybody's <laughs> like oh like oh that, well this wave of covid you know like this well okay like this might be more people going to the hospital but it doesn't seem so bad so it's going to be good yeah now put it with the graph the graph that i showed you the other day mm-hmm. this i don't know if um i don't have I don't, it i don't know if i've got it handy i wish i would i would i would show it to ryan if i did yeah mr otter needs to see this yeah yeah okay i will get that. Dig it up but basically it's a um it shows what the hospital occupancy was in the first 22 months uh, of COVID versus the last eight. And, uh, oh, well, you guys talk. I'll find it. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. Go, go digging. Um, but you're, but you're right. It's, it's in it again, it all, it all tracks back, I think, to messaging. Imagine if when COVID started, they said, Okay, we got a fucking real crisis here, guys. We we got to figure out how to how to deal with this. Um, who's going out to talk? Well, we got doctors. Okay, do they have any sort of like? Uh, I don't know about you guys. Do your do your family GPs? Do you think they would like if you just all of a sudden showed up one day with a camera and put it in their face? Would they do well? Mine would. No, of course not. He's an antisocial um, recluse, but he's a super smart guy. So, what do you do? You pair somebody with them. You say, okay, listen, Bill Burr or mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. George Carlin, um, sit down with Dr. Uh, Greenspoon and uh, sit there and work it out, okay? Get what Greenspoon wants to tell everybody, Dr. Tam, and sit there with the science table, hear what they're saying, and um, get the get the talking points and figure out how to deliver it. Find out from them what is the most important thing we need people to know. All right, here it is. All right, here's George Carlin, ladies and gentlemen. And he's like, Oh shit, we're in trouble, folks. You know, like and it's like in your 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 you're just that's how you talk to your friends. This is how people talk yeah. in real life. So yes, Dr. Tam, smart as a whip, absolute genius when it comes to public health. Horrible fucking horrible public well, speaker. They, horrible. They're, they're not, they don't get media training. They don't get no. They, they, they just, okay, I'm going to deliver the news to you. Like It's like, no, it's, yeah. you have to remember when you're doing something of this nature, it's yeah. acting. It's acting. You and have then to learn how them. to use your own voice for inflection to express the things you need to express to people but so that they can understand not the too, point. Not too deep, though. No, I, don't no, want no. It, I don't want it sauced up so bad that they're looking for Oscars. I want it <laughs> being told to me in a way that you and I are going to understand it. And that's what I want to hear. And I want to, I, I want to hear it. I want to hear bread and butter. I don't, I don't, like I say, I always say it. I don't care how the baby was made. Just tell me if it was a boy or a girl. And that's what I want to know. So, mm-hmm. so here, if you see the graphic, cause oh I'm going to see it. Those tabs you see the cross on yours. Oh, that's anxiety. <laughs> that's Ajita right there. Uh, Ashley, get my pills. I need pills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sorry. he's got more tabs than me. Yeah, yeah. no kidding. I do have three screens, though. <laughs> so, okay, but you see the Sorry. graphic, right? Never mind yep. the tabs. Look yeah, the what are we looking at here? Okay, so this is the the horizontal bar, right? Is everything after December thirty first? The the valleys, what you see here, right? This is all the first eighteen months. These are the only a little bit here, this period here, and this period here was the only time in the first 22 months where hospital occupancy was above this level since the beginning of this year, nonstop. Oh, yeah. yeah okay, you can see the difference, right? Yep. No wonder the nurses, no wonder you're not getting any ERs, no wonder you're not getting your passports, no wonder you're not getting your plane flights. This is why. So now that we're looking at BA5 and they're going, oh, well, you know, it may not be as bad, but you're sending people into the hospital into this situation here That's where right. all the nurses and the hospital staff like the since january 1st for almost full eight months full tilt working yeah. at a higher peak than almost who have already been the last absolutely and burnt out down. going into there 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you like, can't. What was you it the other day? It was fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred hospital admissions with COVID um, in Ontario, I believe, on Friday. Mm-hmm. Fifteen hundred, and nobody's talking about it. Remember back in the day when you when you heard that, like in those whatever peak wave we were in, and you heard fifteen hundred, you're like, holy shit, shut down everything, close the schools, close the bars, close. Now it's like, eh, whatever. Let's go to rib fest. Yeah. Yeah. That's know? why. That's, that's the truth, what's going though. On. Well, look at this little, uh, this little uh, uh, graphic I've got up on the screen right now. It shows the rate of COVID-19 cases, uh, latest per week per 100,000 population. And uh, Quebec is uh, pretty high, but look at Nova Scotia. Look at PEI. Yep. Yeah. Look at New Brunswick. 925 PEI, yeah, 180 in Nova Scotia. Really hard. Wow. Yeah. At the moment. Like, it, no that, numbers for Saskatchewan. Yes. No numbers for Saskatchewan, right? Because, well, right. you know, it, it's 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 not getting they're better. They're probably not even, yeah, they're not even reporting it. No, they're not. No, they've stopped you reporting know. it. You know, like, what have we done? But then they tell you to, to, to make your own decisions. Yeah. And I agree. I agree to a certain extent where, you know what, and, and, and this isn't because I think that it should be that way, but it is that way. So please, people, make your own decisions and make the right ones right now because we're on our fucking own. Yeah, and we are. like we are literally, we've got like we had said before, we we've given we've been given the, the the basis of what we need to do. Every smart doctor has gone out and put messaging out. Let's go do that. We don't need mommy and daddy to tell us that this is what we need to do. You're an adult. Put a mask on when you're in the store. Get your vaccines. Try and mitigate spread of of of, of a, a disease. Because you know what? Yeah. Guess what? Hi, monkeypox. Like yeah. we're literally about to. We're like the 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 World Health Organization just deemed it an emergency as well. Like we're in it. We're in trouble, folks. <laughs> our our planet's burning. We've got two raging pandemics. We're fucked (laughs) and if you don't take control and take charge of you know at least trying to and if i get it if you're talking to your stupid inbred uncle that doesn't uh, the wef and world yeah okay no problem uncle terry just die uh we've got this and 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 i i think we've i think we've we've relied on the the mommy and, and this is where again it's a right wing talking point the mommy state yep. we've relied on it too much and i think now that we know because we're a very well informed majority of people that's why we all got vaccinated mm-hmm. we're very well informed on how this works it's time to just do it ourselves like we yeah. really got to do and, and business owners start making mask mandates in your businesses do it just fucking do it you're allowed to do it and don't let people in. I know it's going to probably have a little bit of an effect at first on your bottom line, but if everybody started doing the right thing, everybody else is going to do it too. And this is what we noticed in the beginning. Let's just do this on our own. We're grownups. You know what I mean? Like it, it sounds, why are we talking like we're talking to children when we're but talking freedoms, to 35 million people? You're right. Mm-hmm. I, and, and I get it. This is why and it's, it's, it's seeping into that CPC rhetoric that just, it, it, and talking like I'm talking is absolute, it's like hogwash to that side. And I get it, but so is most education and so is most, um, empathy. So is most, um, anything that doesn't just immediately immediate. And this is the best part. It's an immediate react, like a very short sighted goal that's what conservatives are all about is trying to get an a a quick gain on something immediate me 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 this is an overall thing where that's like the climate change thing now pandemics education like we talked about in the last show like these are investments in our future our kids future you have little kids Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, I just don't, I don't know where to go anymore. I don't know what to say anymore. I don't know what we've done. Like, we've, we've literally broken it. Well, we've and, just and broken it. I don't know how it's, how we can fix it either. Um, and, and I'm worried. I really am worried about the future. When you have an idiot like uh, Skippy the Wonder Pigeon, uh, or, or what, what, what's your, what's your name for him, Douglas? Uh, uh, short Pants, Skippy Short Pants or Short Pants the Wonder Boy or 
I think Doug's frozen. Oh, yeah, actually. he's frozen. Yeah, he's frozen. Okay, well, maybe he'll be he back. He looks in then. deep thought. Oh, yeah. yeah, he'll come back in a second. <laughs> Um, but when, when you've got that guy ginning up the freedomers, uh, constantly saying that he's going to make Canada the freest country in the world, hi, we're already in the top three, yep. get over it. How much more free do you want us to be? Do you want to be free from consequences? Because it doesn't work that way. That's not what freedom is. No, there's responsibilities. That's the best part. Yeah. It's written right into our charter. It's written right into the charter. Yeah, it, it, freedom is not absolute. There are restrictions placed upon it, um, yep. on based on society. Because I mean, reasonable limitation is something you. people need to learn. Is reasonable, reasonable limitations limitation? It's real simple, and yep. and it, it really came to a head in in February when I lost my mind. Uh, you have people who will ignore science because they they read an article that they're cousins, brothers, sisters, uncles, grandfather wrote on Facebook, and that's the truth. That's news now. But what the doctors are telling us, people who went to school for years to study, what they're telling us yeah. is the opposite, but I don't like that. Oh, because you've been in your bias confirmation echo chamber for so long that any amount of truth just doesn't work for you anymore. So uh, I've asked, I've asked... Um, we've got a lot of friends that are in mainstream and I've asked openly and I know that they've read my request mm -hmm. and I, I, and it's a very simple one and it's anytime you're talking to anybody from the Pierre Polyev campaign, please ask them to define freedom, ask them yes. to just define it. Nobody's ever given a definition of the word freedom. They've never said, this is what freedom is. This is what I mean when I say you should be free. We should all be free. That's that's what it's. Uh, no, I don't understand. Is it is it a they, hard question well, for them let to him ask? Get away it's with. a hard. It'll be a hard question for him to answer. But it's it it's not a hard question to ask. And it's I don't and think it's don't an unfair answer. one either. They don't ask it, and it it really annoys me that they do not hold him uh, hold his feet to the fire when he spews the garbage that he spews. It pisses me off to no end. Yep. They let him get away with this yep. for clicks, I guess. I don't know because I can tell you right now, if I was there, if we were to get a press pass, if the True North Eager Beaver ever got a press pass to a press uh, release that, that he was at, you can be damn sure I would say, please define what you mean by that. You'd be in the cruiser next to Karima. That's where you'd yes. be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> at any, any conservative uh, event for sure. Yeah. Boys, I love you. I have to go. Like I say, um, I think I can hear Ashley actually calling the Uber and packing her bags. So I got to go. <laughs> I love you guys. You guys are love incredible. You too, and thank you. Uh, thank you for having me again. Uh, I totally love these little tiny chats. You get me all riled up and my blood pressure going. And um, it's perfect for bedtime. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> it's, I'm just kidding. It's great. Love um, having and, you drop uh, it in. Yeah, no, thank you so much. And uh, we will, uh, I'll, be, I'll be watching. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to have it on, but I'm just, I, I, I need to actually go and be in a physical space with my wife. I can understand that. And uh, yeah, no, no, that's totally cool. Totally cool. All right, we'd love do you. that. All right, See take care, brother. Love you too. Bye. So I got well, that one more for you there. Uh, if you oh, okay. Another, uh, another document? Yes. Oops, I didn't want that. That was the wrong thing. I, I, I pulled up the wrong thing there go ahead bring it up yep it's up there uh it, it is there. oh there yep. it is sorry i just didn't see it yep so that's uh, this is the one i wanted to to show you i was hoping that ryan would still be there for that but i'm sure he's watching uh yeah, he's watching. So yeah i got i don't know what happened i just got thrown off um but yeah it was uh, weird you froze before, and then you were gone so i figured yeah, you'd be back people were listening yeah I, I i disappeared for a moment so i'm back uh, but if you look at these, these are the graphs of um, uh, COVID for Australia and New Zealand. Uh, now it's winter over there, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is uh, what BA5 is doing. And if yeah, you notice good. at the end, the way it's just going whoop, mm -hmm. all the way up. So uh, a few weeks ago, they were saying that they predicted that uh, BA5 would be, you know, like this, maybe a lot more people would get sick, but it wouldn't be so bad. And yes. If if that's what's happening with it, if those are the confirmed 
and those are deaths. Yeah, that's those not are good. confirmed deaths. And and New Zealand had a really good handle on it, and then they had their share of of uh, yeah. Which is probably why there's yeah. this higher because there's more wood to burn through because they did very mm -hmm. well. Uh, but if it's spiking up like that, going yeah, into the hospital situation that we just showed on the previous graph, where the nurses are not there in the hospital, this is not good. Kids, put on your masks. Yeah, yeah. The A five is no joke. Well, we're in wave no number joke. seven right now, and I just saw something a second ago i'll worry about it later i just saw something to show though that showed um okay that's bizarre um it was showing the um no uh, showing the um uh, rate of infections in new zealand and then it showed a clip of people on the streets and they were all wearing uh masks because they're 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 in the midst of it right now yeah yeah it's it's no joke okay it really is no joke um one more thing I wanted to chat with you about um, was, uh, well, let's see. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to really talk about the CPC <laughs> leadership again. <laughs> it's such a shit show. This, this is the mascot for the Halifax Oyster Fest. Why? Uh, <laughs> why? <laughs> why? why? It's just, yeah, somebody didn't think that one through. Uh, okay, so apparently uh, the Conservative Party of Canada's leadership uh, election organizing committee basically came out with the real reasons for which, uh, you know, for he's, <laughs> he's been... Yeah, he's been booted. And uh, yeah, apparently there still is the thing about having paid someone to work on the campaign or something like that. Uh, but uh, they're back to the membership things again. Those mm -hmm. are the ones that they're really pushing. So they say evidence, according this is to an, according to an article on CBC, evidence included allegations that Brown allowed more than 500 non-compliant membership sales. Correspondence on this issue from the candidate indicates both an unwillingness and an inability to provide the chief returning officer with information about the individuals who are accessing the portal to register memberships the party had found to be non-compliant, the decision says. Now, more than 500 compliant memberships. I'm guessing more than 500 probably means less than 600 because it's not close to 1,000 and it's certainly not 10,000. If you sold over 150,000 memberships, about, and this is 500, like point, point yeah. zero something some percent, really? That's such an egregious violation that it... I don't know. I don't know. I, and... Really, there's no other campaign that has sold at least 500 non-compliant membership sales. Perhaps, I don't know. I don't know. It's just doesn't. I, I don't like the guy. But yeah, I, I also have problem with people being singled out for special treatment. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then there was a. Uh, and then the, apparently uh, there was also issue surrounding money orders where it says the dispute committee says the party received 78 money orders attached to membership forms that appeared to come from the same person. The decision says Brown told the party he raised the issue with the individual in question who said the allegation was false. So 78 memberships out of 150,000 bought with money orders and about five or so, well, sorry, 78 money orders. So there could be more memberships from that uh, than one. Um, and then someone, one person, Debbie Jodoy, one person alone, who says that maybe she says that she was paid. And those three things alone were enough to get him instantly disqualified. And we do not know if all other campaigns have been subjected to the same type of verification. Hmm. Uh, anyway, just putting it out yeah. there. It's messy. It's again, it's messy. It's messy. Um, so, yeah, uh, we can. The other thing that was uh, the small thing that caught my attention was the thing about the turbines. Uh, where, oh, did, yeah. did maybe you didn't know about this? Um, 
this was announced earlier today, but Ottawa Sun uh, columnist who, who covered civic, uh, civic, civic affairs here in Ottawa, Susan Shering, her son found her uh, today. She had died, I guess, over the weekend. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm sure you're familiar with her work. She'd been she'd been covering yeah, yeah. civic politics here in Ottawa for yeah, yeah. God, 30 years at least. Um, yeah, she she passed away in the weekend. I don't know what happened. Uh, I just I just read about it, and I I wanted to mention that because there's anybody in Ottawa who who uh, you know is is watching or listening would would know who she was. She is, and she did a a pretty fair and balanced job, I would say, for somebody who worked for the Ottawa Sun. You know, because they're not mm. known as the most balanced of uh, papers but she i thought she was i thought she did a good job and so she's she'll be missed yeah no i'm so i'm so sorry to hear that um so yeah the the, the last thing i wanted to mention was the the turbines um oh the gas the, turbines yeah the gas turbines for uh you know the purchased North from China. russia or germany or something germany, like that russia, yeah. yeah um there was a huge gaslighting effort going on uh trying to make Canadians believe that the prime minister was basically hand delivering uh, yeah. these turbines uh, <laughs> to Putin himself. Um, now, of course, that wasn't helped by the fact that President Zelensky was all over TV saying that this was a terrible thing and that gave something to the conservatives to point to. But again, putting on my communications guy hat, President Zelensky had to do that. President Zelensky's number one audience is the mm -hmm. people of Ukraine. No, Anything that could be remotely, even like a fraction of a hair, be seen as going against Ukraine, he has to stand up against. Mm -hmm. He Absolutely. did his job. He did his job. Right? We had on our territory things that needed property that needed to be repaired that belonged to Siemens. Right? Not to Germany, not to Russia, to Siemens. We have no right to hold property that is not our own. We certainly do not have right to hold property that is not our own for fear of what Siemens or the government of Germany would do with it. It's not our decision. Mm -hmm. We don't get to decide for Siemens or the government of Germany whether or not they're going to give those propellers back to Russia for the Nord Stream. Not our decision, not our call, not our property. We returned the property to its rightful owners for them to make the decision what it is they're going to do with it. If the propellers end up in Russia, it is because Siemens and or Siemens with the blessing of the government of Germany mm -hmm. have decided to do that. Now, we're looking at winning the nanosecond again, right? Winning the day. Right. What happens, do you think, if we keep those propellers, right, those turbines, yes, and we basically tell the people of Germany and the government of Germany, sorry, we don't trust you to make <laughs> this decision. They're a NATO and, uh, member. And even though we understand that the result of this may be that you freeze this winter, mm -hmm. yes, we're going to make that decision for you. And, um, yes, we understand that you're a NATO ally and we understand that you, Germany, bring a hell of a lot to the table, but, uh, we're still going to do this, which is going to cause, uh, your people to put pressure on you to pull out of the effort because, well, they don't want to freeze. True. So in what, if we look past the current nanosecond, on that day oh my god he's doing how does it advantage either ukraine or us to create a situation or contribute to a situation where the people of germany will start asking their government to pull out of the effort mm -hmm. because it, play the long game people yeah well you have to right you absolutely That's have to uh, and, and do and, not and... hobble an ally <laughs> There are bigger things at play here than than some, like you say, nanosecond optics, because that's all it really is, right? Right. It's th there's much bigger things at play here, and and wouldn't we be contributing to the downfall of Europe if we let Germany freeze? <laughs> I mean, right? I'm just Germany is putting 
putting a lot more on the table than we are. Yeah, well, the they've moment. increased they've increased their defense budget by billions, and we're cheering them on. Yeah, maybe not a good idea to give them incentive to leave. It, it, yeah, I think we should, you know, we should stay good friends with them. Yeah. So, um, in the nation's capital, uh, have you heard of Tupac? Mm. Not the un- T U P O C, the United People of Canada. Well, mm. they've purchased uh, Saint Bridget's Church here Have in the Byward Market. Have they actually purchased it yet? Well, it's, it's it's they're working on it. But yeah. uh, I thought I'd post this little tidbit of information for you. All right. Can you see that? Do you need me to read uh, it? Uh, yep. The okay. United People of Canada gather for an honest, open, truth-seeking journey on the path to truth and reconciliation. The United People of Canada will be making the embassy in Ottawa available to those that wish to come together for healing as a community. Reach out if you would like to host a talk, workshop, meeting, etc. to promote healing and unity between all people of all backgrounds, beliefs, religions, and creeds. The United People of Canada are hosting a 14-day inclusive community conversation at the embassy in Ottawa to discuss residential schools and surrounding topics. The event is one of truth-seeking and healing as a community. Click here now to give to Residential Schools, a community conversation by William Comer. Those rat oh, bastard now sons give, of bitches. Click here to give now yes. to Residential Schools, a presentation by, not to give to Residential Schools. Precisely. They are, they are fundraising for themselves, saying that they're doing something for Residential Schools. And, and local lawyer, uh, James Bowie, I don't know if he goes by Bowie or Bowie, I don't, I don't know. He's saying, okay. he's just, the truckers are using the residential schools for their own fundraising because that's basically what the Tupac is. It's, it's, uh, well, I mean, look at their logo for Christ's sake. Yep. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That was, it, it, I, I just saw that and I was like, okay, the martyrs are building themselves a church and an embassy. Exactly. Daily nailing exactly. of ourselves to crosses at 11 a.m. I just. Yeah. Oh yeah. There goes it's, the neighborhood. There's an entire thread. I, I think I sent you this thread. If not, I'll send it to you in a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, you did. Yeah. From uh, Heather. Yep. Heather Moenko. Uh, she gets right deep into it. And, and they're saying, we have nothing to do with the truckers. Really? Why is Dwayne Leach all over you? Why is Dwayne Leach wearing your, your look at, like, this is, this is some examples of it. Like, this is, look at, from Dwayne Leach's Twitter. Right? Yep. Okay, that, but, but he's not a member. Treat. Yeah. Oh, 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 and and the take a look at whiteness. the take a look yeah. at the rune at the bottom there. The bottom at the root. Yeah. Yes, the tree of whiteness. Oh, and, and comes who's from that? that. Uh, yes, exactly. And look who's in the photo. Yeah. Okay. All right. Dwayne Lynch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and we'll go a little bit further down, and let's see what else have we got here. Oh, yeah. This is this is their their flag mm-hmm. at at their embassy. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, they're pretty highly motivated and funded to be able to start producing hats on mass, don't you think? Oh, of course, red hats with white logos. I mean, these are these are not good people. No. No. And now they're trying to move into well, truth be told, your neighborhood. Yep. Because that's just around the corner from your condo. Like that's down a few few blocks north. Yep. Right, because that's at Dal- uh, that's at uh, Saint Patrick and Cumberland. I think it's Cumberland, Saint Bridges. Anyway, I know where it is because there used to be a pub that I, I used to attend that was across the street from Saint Bridges, and uh, when it was still a church, the priest used to come in and have drinks with us. He was a nice fella. Mm-hmm. Uh. Yeah, so I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, yeah, I don't. There has to be something that can be done that will stop that transaction from going through somehow. Well, that Decosta, let's let's not let's not do things like that now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a 130 no, no. year old it's a uh, uh heritage building 130 year old heritage building and it's it's been it's it's 
been kind of falling apart over the last couple of years because during the pandemic, it's been completely shut down. It was a, it's a deconsecrated church, and it was a center for a community center for performing arts. I've seen live concerts and comedy shows there. I've performed uh, there. Oh, had you? Yeah, okay. And there, yep. there was a uh, there was an Irish pub in the basement, but I mean. Uh, you know, uh, since since the pandemic, all good, brother. Since the pandemic, uh, you know, it's been shut down, so it's kind of fallen apart. And and now they're this, they're trying to buy it for six million. An organization that was formed in March, but they have six million dollars. And isn't there six million dollars missing from the twenty million from the co- the uh, convoy funds or something like that? Um, oh. Right. Oh, this does not make me comfortable. No, I don't. I don't think the sale is going to go through because there's um, they're getting major blowback in the city from the community who are saying we don't want these people here if this is who they are. Along with the fact that you know they're they're he's not divulging where the funds are coming from, and and there's uh, a lot of people going well. If you're going to come up with six million uh, to buy this church. Who's funding it? Because your organization was founded in March, and you got to do some kind of crazy fundraising to come up with that kind of money. They've bought. They want to buy it. They've already started renovating it. They don't even own it yet, and they're already yep. renovating. Yeah, uh, yeah. Very, very much um, dark, dark money. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, you, you don't want. Well, I mean, like I said, I'm hoping there's something that can be done because you don't want something, a group like that grabbing a foothold in any neighborhood. No, you don't. You don't want no. that at all. Uh, all right. Um, those are about all the topics that I had for tonight. Do you have anything on your mind? Uh, well, a couple of things, but, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're pushing the two-hour mark right now, so... Maybe we'll wind it down. It is Sunday night, and um, I have some laundry to do before I go to bed. Although I'm working from home tomorrow, so maybe, maybe I can do a load at lunchtime. But, uh, sorry, I'm thinking out loud. <laughs> I get tired, I get a little loopy, and that's what happens. Um, uh, what else could I talk about? There was something else that I wanted to discuss, and let me just check. I had it up here on some headlines. Oh, yeah, of course, the, the hashtag Trudeau's got to go is trending again on Twitter. But the funny thing is, it's like some of the things that, that, they're, that people are posting, I like this one, this is, this is cute. I'll just share this one because I think this is hilarious. <laughs> I can't read it. Like most, this Ontario, this, uh, this, like most Ontario storm, this too will miss Ottawa by the south. Proof positive Trudeau is the greatest PM of all time. <laughs> 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 that should trigger some Trudeau has got to go, folk, because there's a massive storm <laughs> blowing through, but it's missing Ottawa. <laughs> Uh, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, Trudeau's got to go. Check out the new Star Trek, Strange New Worlds. Like, I mean, people are just, they're trolling the trolls now, right? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's so good. That's so good. Um, on a personal note, oh, oh, look, 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 look. Yes, thank you, Linda. Pierce Lepage has won the silver in the world decathlon. So, yes. Awesome. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's good for him because he's working very hard as well. It's so nice uh, to uh, to have a uh, two world class decathletes. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah, we're not only world class champion, champion. Um, I um, I, I there's one little thing that we. Uh, forgot to mention and it came up a couple of times but when we were talking about uh, what's going on in the states that i wanted to i, I wanted i just didn't want to forget uh mentioning uh and it was about uh, those outtakes because i saw a comment also from them uh, mm -hmm. from the kids who are watching uh and when ryan was mentioning them as well the outtakes there's something about the outtakes that really stuck with me and i don't know if you noticed them uh, but when he's doing the outtakes and they're telling him to say, okay, the election is over and like, you know, and, and it's been certified. He goes, no, I don't want to say the election is over. Mm. Right. And then later on when he says, you know, if you did these things, you're going to pay, if you did it, you're going to, and he's going to say what's going to happen to them. 
you know, give a description a, a little more definitive of what you will pay will be. And he goes, no, I don't want to say that. I already said you will pay. He did not want to be specific about what would happen, probably because, you know, <laughs> Given that he was doing it, he didn't want to be, say what the consequences that should befall him. Because uh, I could definitely see that. It says, you remember when he said that like this? Well, no, yeah, no, that applies to him. <laughs> um, we always had this vision of, or this, well, not we, but a lot of people had this image of Trump as being disorganized and haphazard and just speaking off the top of his head and not knowing. That showed me that he was always very intrinsically and inherently involved in the crafting and shaping of the message. And he never said anything or never not said anything. He never mm. fully intended to say as he said it. Oh yeah. Agreed. But the, so, but it wasn't just like, like some guy, Oh yeah. He's just like, Oh, grandpa's off his meds. When he's saying this stuff, no, no, because that's the thing, right? That was always the benefit of the doubt, right? The same mm -hmm. thing with his kid, right? He's too dumb to crime, as as they keep on saying on the Daily Beans, and that's why he didn't get he didn't get uh, charged the first time. Like it's like, you know, even though they keep on saying that ignorance of the law is not an excuse, apparently, you could being being too dumb to to, to commit a crime is. Um, so, I am a. Again, when I'm watching him shape the message, what he will and what he will not say, and what he, as that's going on, like this, and the message sounded crazy when we were listening to it. Oh yeah, completely right? bizarre. But when you get those little two pieces, it's like, no, this is not crazy. This is carefully crafted to sound crazy to us. Hmm. I mean, yeah. think about this. Yeah. This guy has a motor, mo motor mouth and an opinion on everything. And in four or five straight years, and ever since here, he's not like this. Even though he says everything mean about everybody and talks about everything and has opinion, he managed to do that entire time not to say one bad word about Putin. That requires a, a level a of one. discipline yeah. that is beyond not a fool, not an accident. Not, oh, I don't know what I was doing or I got people for that. Nobody told me. No, no, no. That, that, those two little moments for me sealed. The, and I knew it was that well, that was the case because mm -hmm. you can't be that consistent so long without making a mistake. right? But have, seeing it, that's to, to me, that's the evidence that kills. That's the clip oh, that yeah. slices and dices. Agreed. I hope he swings. <laughs> he's got to swing for this speaking of swinging ooh is that Brooke yes <laughs> ah, Canadian girls kick ass I love that local lady Ottawa Valley yep yep becoming the winningest golfer in Canadian history male or female period and like she's not even done like a quarter of her career yet oh god no not <laughs> even close i mean she's just getting started man oh yeah she's impressive she is really really impressive shot an even par 71 to win the evian championship by one stroke over lgp lgp lpga tour rookie sophia schubert after struggling on the front nine yeah and went to and minus like, 17 awesome. yeah. for all four rounds yeah and, and yeah. here's a uh, there's a great photo of her right here i'm gonna see it. share this photo i think this is a, this, this is kind of photo you like to see of course it's the toronto star so they're shutting me down as i try and show you this great photo of her <laughs> with oh, the championship trophy uh, no, yeah good for her good for her oh and, and who's um dr caddy her sister yeah oh i forgot to mention uh there was there was some tennis news uh um the victoria mboko and kayla cross made the finals of the junior uh girls at wimbledon uh, so they lost oh, in the final cool. uh they lost in the final but they made it there and mboko was also in the semi-final in singles and i think that kayla cross uh, uh and i don't remember who her partner is just won the doubles event in saskatoon 
there was a tennis tournament there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, our Canadians again, you know, on the, on the track, on the field, cause there was, a oh, Cameron, I can't remember her last name now, but who uh, became the first women to win a, a field medal last week uh, mm-hmm. at the hammer throw as well. Um, so, you know, for a country of our size, we have athletes that just punch so far above their weight. And like, oh, and notice, notice how around. I make a fist. <laughs> oh, that's a skippy fist. <laughs> no, that's a skippy fist. That's a skippy fist. Oh, that's a skippy fist. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, you know, so proud of our athletes. I mean, the, the, what's not to be proud of? We love them. Um, the, J- the Jays won again today, by the way, eight to four over the, uh, well, over there the you songs. go. There you go. Uh, Kids, that's the end of this episode of the Eager Beaver podcast. We hope you love listening to us because we love making this for you. And because democracy is something you do, um, you know, if you want to be a friend of Rosie, I don't know if you've listened to our episode on food insecurity yet, but, uh, you know, uh, food, people are having difficulty feeding themselves, making uh, the end of the month uh you know, so uh, if you can uh, support your local food bank, if you can uh, do anything of that sort locally, that's great. But uh, if you want to help us, we're a small group of people uh, that are sponsoring uh, this lady named Rosie who lives in Kenya, who has two beautiful children and two parents who are ill. Uh, so basically five people, she's supporting them all on her own. And uh, she is being in She's incredibly resourceful, incredibly hardworking. Uh, we're donating $25 a month uh, to help towards uh, giving her a basic income. But whatever you can uh, you know, donate, that would be great. And you don't have to donate monthly. You have one-time donations that are, can still be helpful. Uh, if you want to do that and want to help us out, uh, send us a message at our Twitter feed at TrueEager on our blog at Facebook, True North Eager Beaver, or our email address, true north eager beaver at gmail.com and uh, we'll put you in touch with uh connie who's uh taking care of all of that for us uh of course retweets shares gentle corrections constructive criticisms compliments requests and positive reviews are always welcome if you're listening to us on apple please give us some stars uh, tell your friends right tell your friends word of mouth oh, is yes, absolutely please. invaluable yep we and uh and, and, and our Twitter feed has crossed the 500 kits following us uh, today. So, um, Cannabis Gran, congratulations, and thank you for being our 500th kit on Twitter. Uh, and, I mean, Cannabis Gran. It's like I I I want to go to I want to go her place for milk and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, of course, uh, if you wish to subscribe, um, you know. We're in it for the long haul, baby. Like, if you like us, put a ring on us. <laughs> you can do it via our pod page site at podpage.com. We can be North- bought. <laughs> <laughs> the True North Eager Beaver <laughs> with hyphens between each of those words. Uh, yes, we can be bought. Uh, Mr. G- Grizzly loves a pint of Gizness. And, uh, oh, yeah. I love uh, farm boy gluten-free chocolate chip cookies. I'm also a cuddle bug. I go for cuddles. I like yeah, to snuggle. What, to what do you charge for those? I don't charge for snuggles. That's my. That's how I intend Dude, to become. Dude, you, you, you threw it right across the plate. I had to hit it out of the park. <laughs> I mean, come on. Now that's how I intend to become a UN ambassador of goodwill. Oh. The next okay. Angelina Jolie, I will go all around the world giving free snuggles and hugs. Okay. Right. Yeah. Sure. So that's why. So kids, you have to make me really big on Eager Beaver. That way the UN will notice me and they will give me a job and I will travel the world with Angelina Jolie. <laughs> I should be traveling with Angelina Jolie. <laughs> yes, but when I tell her she, I like her shoes, she'll believe me. <laughs> she'll believe me too because I'm sincere. <laughs> and finally, oh God, we're going off the rails. And finally, okay. if you really, really, really like this podcast and wish to encourage us to do more, we work for tips. As we said, a pint of Guinness for Mr. Grizzly or some farm boy gluten free chocolate chip cookies for me via our coffee page at ko fi.com slash eager beaver, all in one word, lowercase letters. That's ko fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase, all in one word. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, until next time, dear kids, it can be a tough world out there.
It can also be a hilarious one, though. <laughs> so be kind to and gentle with yourself. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, any words of wisdom? Yeah. Um, remember to laugh at yourself. It's important to do that. Because, you see, sometimes we take ourselves a little too seriously. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, I, I'm, I'm not one to do that. So I, I, I don't take myself too seriously is what I mean. So to that end, I'm going to show you a photo of me. <laughs> In 1984, when I was 16, when I tried to grow my hair long. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not Jewish and I'm not Italian. <laughs> but that is a badass fro. Okay, good shirt, though. Oh, yeah, hell, I got it at the concert. <laughs> <laughs> you got to laugh at yourself. It's Don't take yourself too seriously. And that, I keep that photo and I post it for, for shits and giggles because it's funny. And, and I'm... You can tell, like, believe it or not, I, I did I did have braces and I did wear them, but they didn't pan out for me. But you can tell that I have them in the photo because I'm trying mm-hmm. to keep my mouth, so you don't see how my, my shit-eating grin, to say the least, is because I didn't want to show my braces. <laughs> you look like the cat who eat the canary. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, my nephew, my nephew who is uh, 15 years old, uh, his hair is longer and curlier than mine was at that time. It, it's... it's uncanny when my sister like i go over to visit and i'm like jesus christ almighty and and he's like what and i go this is what he's like you look like me no dude it's the other way around (laughs) (laughs) i was here first (laughs) i've been here a lot longer Ooh, ooh! Looking at the comment section, uh, seems like people like what they see. <laughs> um, this, uh, this is a. This one is 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 kind of funny too. I'll I'll show you this one. Uh, let's just see here. I'll find this. This was when I was about twenty one, when I got a haircut. Ooh, you got legs there. Yeah, they still look like that too. It's weird. I, mm-hmm. I'm a genetic freak. I mean, come on, I'm 54 and I'm still ripped. Mm. And I haven't been to the gym lately because of the pandemic, you know. Mm. It's just, it's, it's genetics. Mm. I, don't have, I don't have nice teeth and I have a bald head, but I still have the body that I had when I was 25. It's weird. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense i'm 54 it shouldn't be like that and that's how it is so that's when you smile and you say thank you life yeah yeah you know yeah it is yeah, i'll take it so. although i wish i had a full head of hair <laughs> <laughs> I, I can rock the hell out of this look i can but you know yep yep i miss it's having hair look. it's a good look it's a good I'm, look it's a good i'm look. doing mr clean tonight <laughs> fresh shave uh, you know. yeah 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 it does look fresh. oh good stuff um so that's that's your that's your wisdom mr Grizzly. that's my wisdom that's don't your take wisdom. yourself too seriously learn to laugh at yourself and enjoy life because it's really short yeah be a goofball because like the alternative is just like too depressing you just Absolutely. Took, I just, you just yeah, I'm, out. Take, I'm clumsy as hell, right? Like, <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know if the people listening and not watching are going to get the last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you're watching, great. And if not, if you're just listening, you can always check it out because this will be on the YouTube channel as well. Um, it's streaming on our YouTube channel as well as the Dean Blundell uh, network all across the network and on our YouTube channel and on my personal Twitter. So we're trying to reach as many people as possible. So it's all there for, for the viewing. It's all there for the viewing and listening. Mm-hmm. And of and, course uh, we will post the audio to this. Uh, I'll have it up tomorrow on, on the, uh, on the podcast channel. Yep. And if you're uh, happening to be listening to us on podcast and you found us on Twitter, uh, when I post them up, I put, I post the audio and then I post uh, the video and the tweet just below it. So you have the choice of accessing one or the other. Because we like to give you choice. <laughs> All right, kids. Uh, that's it for today. So, Mr. Grizzly, please roll the credits. The True North Eager Beaver podcast is an Eager Beaver Mr. Grizzly collaboration. Research, story, and guest curation, and copy written by the Eager Beaver. Recording, production, editing, and additional research by Mr. Grizzly. 
music courtesy of Ben Sound Royalty Free Music. Once again, thank you to our founding sponsors, The Peppermaster, The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. And thank you to Pete Jarvis for our artwork. We love it. Kits, we'll talk to you real soon. Bye. Take care. And that's the show. Yeah. <laughs>